hourglass. <laughs> so we call this one the hourglass. Push back, lift up. You won't forget that now, will you? You can go and say to all your friends at work, hey, I've been home doing the hourglass. <laughs> One more time, forward and back, reach, reach, and squeeze, march it out for me. Good work. Great. Let's keep it up now. I want you to take two steps on a diagonal toward this corner, and I want you to jab, jab, punch. Let's go real slow here. Jab, jab, punch. Does this look familiar to you? It's a little bit like some of the moves we do in a martial arts based program. But if we keep it real slow, we can do it with our hand weights. The key is to not go too fast. If you're going too fast, you're gonna lose control of these weights and risk injury. Good, let's go in the other direction. Two steps and two steps back. A jab, a jab and a punch. Who would have ever thought that a couple of bottles of water <laughs> could give you such a workout? Good. Two jabs, punch. One more time in this direction. All right, let's hold it here with a march. Take your arms down for a little rest. We're gonna put those together. Once to that corner and back, once to that corner and back. I hope you've got a bit of room at home. Let's go for it, here we go. Jab, punch, now the other way. That's great. Let's see the girls. Jab, jab, punch, perfect. Good. Jab, jab, punch. So you're really working the upper body, really working into those arms, the back, the shoulders. I nearly copped it, didn't I then? Bottle of water to the side of the head. <laughs> All right, hold it here, let's march. Good work. Take your legs out a little way into a squat action. Bend your knees and punch through, punch. Good. Pull your elbows back and arms extended out in front of your chest. Push, push. Great work. Good. Try not to let those bottles drop. If they are getting a bit heavy, just give yourself a little breather. And uppercuts, keep it tight. Lifting that bottle right up to your chin, almost ready for a drink. It's Nelly drink time. We've got a little bit more to do on the floor. So grab a mat, get yourself a position where you're gonna be nice and comfortable lying on your back on the floor. We'll do a little bit more, then we'll have a well-deserved drink and we'll stretch. Well done. And up. Just a little bit more to do. All right, I want you on one knee, your other leg extended, and lean slightly forward from the hips. Let your arms just drop naturally down, and then pulling those weights up with a row action. So working into our upper back area. Down under your legs and pull it up. Down, pull up, good. It's important that you've got that slight tilt forward at the hips to really focus in on the upper back. Otherwise, if you're upright, you're working into your shoulders, which is fine, but we've done quite a bit of work on our shoulders already so far today. So leaning forward just moves that workout more into the upper back area. Good. Just a few more. Squeeze those muscles between the shoulder blades. Excellent, all right, relax. Can you lie down on your backs now? Lie down and bending your knees, we're going to work through the chest area with some chest presses. So imagine you're in the gym, you're lying down, you've got a massive barbell, all right? You're gonna press it up over your chest. 
So bend the elbows, that's the way, Cherie. And directly over the midline of the chest. Not drifting those weights back around the neck or the face area, but directly above your chest. Push up and down till the elbows come close to the floor and then pressing up. See how Julia's got her arms nice and wide, 90 degrees at the elbow joint as she bends down. That's a perfect position and pressing up. Down and press right up. Good. The strengthening through the pectoral muscles here in the chest. You know what I like to say when I do this one? I must, I must firm my bust. <laughs> I must, I must. You can say that to yourself and see if that helps motivate you. All right, take it into a fly action now. Take the arms fully up over the chest and turn those bottles around. Out to the side with just a slight bend at the elbow and then hugging up over the chest again. Good. Still working through the chest. You'll feel a little bit of uh, pressure too through your bicep area. Good. Squeeze. Now, even if your weights are really light, what you can do is imagine you've got, oh, it could be a big armful of chocolate mousse <laughs> and you're squashing all the way through it. Sometimes by using those mental pictures, you can visualize and just add a little bit more to your workout. Squeeze it in. Is it chocolate or strawberry mousse? Chocolate, caramel mousse. We're getting fussy now. <laughs> All right, take those arms directly up above the chest. Put your water bottles together and extend your top of your bottle towards your forehead and then up. We're doing a tricep extension back and up. Now it's important that your elbows are pointing up at the sky or up at your ceiling and you're bringing the water bottle toward the forehead. Cherie's working here into the back of her arm. Good. If that gets a little bit heavy, you can just drop one bottle, hold the other and use the one arm. Good. Can you feel that in the back of the arms? Great. So down and lift it up, a great tricep workout. Just a couple more, one, two. You can put those weights away, you've done well, but we're not quite through. Rolling over onto your knees. Can we do some push-ups together? Hands on the ground, extend your knees back and drop and lift. Still working the chest area. Drop and lift. Being careful to keep a nice flat back and not to sway your back in the middle. To do that, you've got to keep your tummy nice and tight. So hold it tight, down and up. Who wants to do advanced push-ups on their toes? Not today, Cherie. How about you, Julie? Just a couple for us. You could try a couple of these. They may be too difficult. Maybe one a day, and each day you'll find you can do an extra one. That'll be plenty, Julia, beautiful. Dropping in now, tricep push-ups on your knees. Keep your elbows really tight. Drop and lift, drop. It's important that your elbows stay really close to your rib cage. You've worked really hard, a great upper body workout. We've had our heart rates up. We've been using our water bottles. We deserve a drink. Why don't you have one with us and join us next time? You girls did great. molested when she was six by someone she trusted. The doctors finally walked into the door. They basically were telling me that 
she had a 5% chance of living. I couldn't understand how somebody that tells you they loved you, that held you as a child, could abuse you. Tommy Scott grew up among gang violence, drugs, and poverty in the projects of South Central Los Angeles. I felt um, not normal, um, not good. I wasn't lovable. As a teen, Melissa discovered that drinking gave some relief. Tommy is free today and continues to tell people that it was Jesus who changed his life. The time I spent in, in prison, I spent uh, putting my ideas together on you know, how I was going to come back and make it all right. And I realized my purpose, that I was created to reflect the glory of God. Duke now realizes why God kept him alive. These were real people facing desperate situations, just like you and me. You know, Jesus died to set you free, and he can give you a new heart. Gabriella is trapped in a collapsing mine, and she is rescued by Alejandro, and underneath the rubble, they fell in love. Beautiful and iron-willed. in a mine is nothing for you to be ashamed of. In fact, you should be very proud of it, honey. But her destiny will be marked. <laughs> Alejandro's ambitious mother becomes her worst enemy. She was cast into prison, and all that she was left with was her memories of her son. Going. And the woman. Now, she has to forge a way to revenge on the other side. The average age of the international team is under 18. And under. The primary role of Team Uganda is to remain is to Division 2. Probably that's the only thing that can make one or two rugby fans smile that the Cubs are doing well. The players haven't put on the, they haven't wore the game faces. Mm. They're not the animals we saw last season because Ferguson had the same group of players mm. and he did deliver the Holy Grail, which is the title. Sawe <laughs> Mukumeni ya mamoto ka nebanya kake bintu. Hapa deba kusaka decision ya wazira ba, na wakubira ba kwenye ba waga ma muangu de. Abu fere, abasaji mukaa gaba ba deba fere ba kwenye ngapi yambi sengo la ya mobile money, police ba gude mo bofo. Senga ba tunolida. Chabadewuchitia. <laughs> Edio Mutanda.
NTV kusawe mo niongera okukwa niliza. President Yoweli Museveni ya kuziza umu kubofisa mumaje. Mwano muli muadumi de jeda UPDF mutalo wa South Sudan. Kayanja Muhanga akuzidwa kuva ku dali ya Kano na tekebwa ku dali ya Brigadier. Akuje kitongole cha Iso Roni Badia na ye akuzidwa kuva ku dali ya Kano na tekebwa ku dala ya Brigadier. Ebisinga huko wano tujja kuvanga tubitukutusako mawuri gafe aganaba gadiria. Kubulinga tufuddeyo katikiro wa Buganda Charles Peter Maiga. Amalirizo kulambula kwe mu bitundu ebyankole. Abaganda bali mwankole ba ba situse ni bamuti kobo bakanga bagamba ntibetaga agitegezo mutanda anti nabo bandi bade basanyu fera bajja kusanyu kanyu singo mutanda abachali lako okulambula kuno katikiro kwa koze kubaddeo nga kwa kweya mbisa mukusonda ensimbe ezo kudabiriza masiro agayo chebwa emyaka jetukubye mabega katikiro embarara ayanirizidwa abantu abenja uru omuli abaganda na banyankole <tipos> kwa abakungu kuva mu government ya wakati ne yemengo nga muno mu mubadde no mulangira David Wasajja alambu de chifo cha igongo nga wano waterekebwa ebyo buwanga bya banyankole era nkatikiro asobodde kugula we chifo awakumibwa ebyo buwanga bya baganda abali mu ankole abaganda abali mu ankole basobe katikiro atuso baka obusabo omutanda okuchalira ko kubantu be abo mu ankole era tusubira anti katikiro bwana dayo ajja kumutegeza anti abaganda be western uganda ne kigezi basanyuse nnyo kubera nga bamulaba ko era ne kabaka bamulindi toga kabaka tichalye kembalala olwensonga tugwe mulundi ndozo kunabo busoka fete tumulaba nga keno tusanyuse nnyo okuchala kwa mukuru katikiro wa buganda era tuli musanyu lya mai nenga tusaba nnyo ne saba sajja okujja kuchali yako akati nzenga mukuru wa mu mulimo gwange kugenda wa kitafe mu government kitafe abana ba bali enkole bagala kula bakonja mugamba ingalo era saba sajja kabaka chana abangambye nja kuchibategeza katikiro Charles Peter Maiga akatirizanti Uganda okuba mu mirembe weta giso kuba oku kwatagana wakati wa mawanga gonna bwoza nuno mirembe chiti wa mawanga era kuyomba we muyomba emirembe kigwao emirembe kigwao tujja kusobola kukola tunazimba tutiyankole ngatwali mirembe abaganda era basabye ne mama nabagereka atongoze kisakate mu ankole omulangira David Wasajja yekulwe akuti dabantu okukuma ebyo buwanga byabwe kubanga banafa abazungu bibatisinga bakuma nye byafayo na yate fenga tubira gajalira olusi tocha byoche the greatest uganda to have lived omunya uganda orabe ireho na mbemwe mikingi mutesa the first mukusonda ensimbi ezokuzza wa masiro obukade kinana mbona bwe bukunganyizidwa nga muno mbade mu esente ezobuliwo sake nsubise atenga tuvude kubibade yo katikiro ya chade abalonye dembe ya balode ba mukenenya benya mivo olaba na Uganda ambu abatandise atokusosola abalode ba mukenenya kino kidi do muso rosemary na mubiru agami bwanti yakoze mpiso ji ali akoseza atena jukubo mwana nga manyibulunji nti mulimu akauka akaleto bulwadde wa mkenya onono achaliyo kumere ruzira meja rubala mira ruranga amazemi akabiri mwenda ate kanoni gidiyo ni byamugisha amazemi akabiri mwebiri no bulwadde wa mkenya bano bagamba anto kwati wa silimo techitegeza nti yenkomerero ni no muchala omuchala takaina kati tuza dabana ba, ba, babiri omwa ine myaka e, myaka etano omuna ine myaka omwaka kumune ekitundu bonate bayina ate sinze nzeka naba rabanja bayina akauka kamukenenya uh, muntu yali na asigaziza onole cd4 count chinana kati ndi na 10 mu bisatu munkaga uh, olokuva no bujanja bi obumala bategeza ante omusango gwa namubiro guta defutwa wa muno buchayi abantu abombwe balina eri abalade ba mukenenya waliwo koti e ya abantu ba bulijjo eh akuraja eh asiga tu muyino eh ba mu ba muteke ruzira eh ono mchala yabadde ina ensonga 
Luwachi yandi ya gado kuto mwano ono. Haba ntucheta chevata manji nti mtu wa yaba kuludagara. Akende za infection. Okusasa nyaka uka kufamu by 96%. Musawa nsambu mbili. Bagenda. Nafune dagara. Eri, erizi yiza akawuka kamu kene nya okusasa na mbili. Kabate kaja mkwa ata. Wanamu Uganda. Haba antu wakakade kamuwe mituwala tano. Weba gambi wakubana kawuka. Kale tovula debu wa mkene nya. Tulina uh, okuno nyeleza. Okula ganti nino. Omuntu okusobola okukwati wa obuluwa dengabuja. Mumpiso evera e kubidu wa bukubibu eh? wa. Mukisa gulinga gumu mu mbikumi bisatu. Banelaba gama anteteka kusirimu. Elili mubage. Teina chinene cherigenda kuyamba banda Uganda okujja kwa kuteka wa kusosora abarwa deba mukene nya kijja kuleta ate akauko kusasa na tena okusinga ngabwe kali kubanga abantu abantu bonna abanji bagala baveyo bay abakaina baveyo bayamba abatakaina namubira kuma wo mukoti kulo kubiri Jingo Francis NTV kusawe mo iyo ngatuvuda yo police katuelika wasija mukaga begombi mo bwala Ngabaga mbibu kwe fula mo mkunya gaba ntu ngabe yambisa masimo. Ntipa wangu dechoka jibi kwe ranga baba nyeze. Bano, baba diba kubilaba ntu wa masimo ulufa nyuma ni baba gamba okubasi ndikile nsimbe kukula. E ya mobile mbano uro ni baba isawo. Abantu banje choku gabe namba za weza masimo tebachira ba mbulabi. E ranga chizuli duanti ya bafiri banji be yambisa kakisakano. Okufune namba zino ni banya gaba njini zo. Nga go njini njini mwena mauli leba solo jiku jako ni wajituletira. Ito jikubira, wabu kiliza, na business yetu watu kuwade, nuntu wa sente. Wabu kiliza, yetu wabu tabu, nebi guira ukusimu. Omusajono Peter Tambazi, akunyu mizengiri jeba kwa tamuwa bantu wabu jeganga baita mkuwa kubira masimu. Elane baba chamu kiliza, nti baliko biba wangu di. Ono neba nabala rokuli isma hili sebuliba. Hassan Kato, Richard Sonko, ne Richard Semambo. Baga mante minimu jaba jisinga bajikola nga balike chifo webe ogomye. Elango luna kubaduba luganyi, baba damu nkeda. Nenga tituina wizivu lala wetukola kubwa kubira tubiya tu tubadde tubikolera wachi ya mani wotutula eranga na yachi laba tu ja bayi nema kasende nagenda ku minimu abasinga bayi nema minimu ja baba mu bantu kedi be minimu ne bigana najja ku mubino be bigana eranga agende wogi yebaka wabula police gamanti bifo mwe basinzo kukabiza abantu akajijiri mwe muri eche katwe chinyoro e katwe mutawo najja na nkumbi chibuye nenya na ma baba de bako saka decision nga woziraba nga bakubira abantu ne baba gama muwangu de muweleze sente ne baba weleza sente baba mu baba kubira ne baba adilu ze zitali yo ntitukwa de puli twina bitwagalo supplying then gwe bobango oli mugonvu ku sente no weleza sente ku mobile money mu bokodi obulala boba kozesa bali ne bitabo mmaba wandike namba za masimu zino eranga buka kutanda no gwa mu kitimba kyabwe bakusako la machiba yambo buta kudda munga bali bubi Namba bagenze bazu waandika, nabati kinga na ukuti kinga. Ngabala ganti zino ze namba, ezu wangu de, zino vino vye mtao vya wala teka mo namba zaba antu. So tuku wa umulange ili haba antu bafu. Babele begende deo. Nena kuzina wabufu kati wacha aga wakola, bali mu mmeji wama teka mo wafu na sedi. Polisi ya gamanti ya bade rudenge no nyabakuru pia bana baga manti bali ya kubuongovu wabwe. Edanga cha rude dache na kuzabwana nizigu wako nga buwe bagamba. Batu gambi ya tibani na buwe banji bacha alioko. So... Chetugeza kwa kukulabula abantu wa fe, bwe mufu na meseje zezo baba sindikila. Ni baga mati sende mba denzi sindikila mura de mulago. Mba denzi sindikila mwana ku university. Kwa miyao weziti, ojeko weziti. Tozi zayo, atesi gena kupolisi ya kulio kumpi, olipoti ngetu la venti no yambiwa. Kati mchisera china abantu wa itibuwa kuja beke beje bita bobino. Okulabu wa mwema babali babidu waka abantu wano. Chibayambo kuguru wa kemi sangu. Kukubo mwuranga, bobanga walofu nye kubu zimu ngobo, ni bakuba mungeri nge Oje katwe, tuweke, tulabengeri, tu, 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 tu jetu tunamuwa na wavuka tomanya, nga beba kubba. Jebovu deko mkozi munafe wanukweni TV na hiyo wakwa mchitimba chaba feribano. Nge ya muba ya mute geza anti muna dini, ira munafe kukakana nga mamu bie mituwaro nkaga. Dini rubo wa sava, NTV kusawemu. NTV kusawemu, guamula biwa NTV, kuchutuwale nga chukule guli yoli tuwale, nga liyamanyi kubanga, lija kuyambo kusobola okwe wala abafele. Wabula? Tukenda kumuna mkatono dala, mkuda tukumuna mwela malamanje, omuli negano go taina kusuwa.
abana ba basingo bunje Lindi yola be chitundu cha fecho kubile chomu sajwa emi ya kinkaga muetano Ya kwela government emi ya kajisuwa muasato Engedi jano nyamu ya alu wala jana ukufuna agasimo Gabriela is trapped in a collapsing mine and she is rescued by Alejandro, and underneath the rubble, they fell in love. Beautiful and iron-willed. I told you a thousand times not to put your hands on me! Your mom working in a mine is nothing for you to be ashamed of. In fact, you should be very proud of it, honey. But her destiny will be marked. <laughs> Alejandro's ambitious mother becomes her worst enemy. She was cast into prison, and all that she was left with was her memories of her son going and the woman. Now she has to forge a way to revenge on the other side. Kati <laughs> sawe mo kulika yo mo kumba mo ko la katugene maso ne police kabala galangeli kabavu ko bina mukaga begombe mo bwala ngaba gambi bwo kubante ba mo ko kakundi akabadde kazi nyaba na Kampala oluguje bano bagambi bwo kuba nga mukumenya mayomba na maduka sako no kuba masimo agomu ngalo baba devedi sankuli avubuka bana bakwatidwa mu kirekya keso na kulegulo be bavubuka bakazi bwa kirinya lya bachi face iranga basangidwa mu febye njawulo okuli kabala gala Kansanga, Busavala, Machindi, Deje Nembitundu Bia Nabweru. Bano baga ambi wukubanga yabachu nyaba tuze. Gawe nyama yumbaga wukutuwale vintu. Sakono kubaba antu wukutuwale vintu omuli ya masimu na masawo. <laughs> Kuba tuwade tutu tukuba nkunga na mubantu. Komiente polisi inga buli omuwa komple inga chife skulu. Abante bachi ebaka. Baba suvi zo kubata wukubache la mayumba. So komiente yeso zeo netu kulembera. Kuba yeba deba manye bulu unji nyo. Ninja ba nibo na ba lodgers ba gani ba sasa ne ba gani ba leta ba naabu ne ba jana ma inja gami zani ne ba jana ebiso ne ba jana ubu yondo ngaba zeku kukola chi kutajuko kaka tia e jambi yenu na juwa Gaza urokuwa na nubali ba ngambo kola chi ukuzi ne ba gani ngendi na wiponi yangu ero na kula ruada koko nomba ba rumba na ma inja na nza si ba bunto bunto era kuchalo kona. The same baboon to the bang and your cubans or could be that dollar. Never see his a cub bobo. I'm Kubavucabano. But a very small one of Alina Avis singing moon to Sako Navy so. And a police mukwa quarter. Just what they know quite a motor, a table is wanted to because the sir. The guy receives, he's a receiver. He plans for them, then he sends people now to the field. Police against the economy for a gun be wanted to be a Quaker. Sako Navy to a bit of a beer. And NTV now you are sold to gain the Babiri Kuvano, Okuli Joseph Sempa, Nemune Isaac, and Subogay, eight and Ninja, Jibabeda. Bano, Basangi don't even to be Omunju, Okuli TV, Zewufa, Fani, Emi Fariso, DVD player, Nevin Tabida, every gun be want to be bay. Baba Batuala Baba Tuali, Chichitono knew. Baba batuara, baba tuari, kwa basinga nuto malaki mireme. Tu kera kora basinga tu malaku mireme. Baba muise na gana, ukugula u. Kati yako kuwala ampenyumba na yagalo kuita wa guru kubati. Diri ya mulabi ya dijizabu edit. Yali yuziza. Baba kamba kola mlimuche. 
Ya ngamba atunda nsene ni. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ne mugambe nsene ni sizo ni weri guwa wo. Oli kolachi. Mkasera kano. Tuli wano na wero gowa mune polisi. Sakono mkuba tebe lezo kubanga ya wadibati gomie chivuga. Kati polisi egeza kukufuna kuviziviti. Esuolo kongiro kuno njeleza. Polisi teko miyao. Yeyonge deo ne mbitunde vidala. Banu. Bonge dokutege za polisi. Ngeba inaba nabwe. Abata na kuatibwa. Era polisi mkasera kano. Na beba wenja. Suhail Mugabi. NTV kusawemu. Beo banafe ya baba njia biba taula oba biba tatelisa. Ya dengo talo la South Sudan dugenda lucha. Ngane mbele da Monteko. Wachari waba nojibu budamu. Haba chiyo wa mbitu mdo mimo. Mbuchika kono buwa Uganda. Chitegeze duante mbano nojibu budamu. Haba kono kiliza mbitu wala musanfo. Biba kadukira mbitu Uganda kufa mbitu mbitu. Makati gwa mwezi kwa desemba, o maka guno uwede o utalo, gula baluka uwe South Sudan. Ketutabide, wifa e, mguange liyo ita e, South Sudan. Mungkambi ya bili, ya zaipi na elegu mdistrikti ya ajumani. Ye wache yi wabano nyibu wabuda mbuli rucha, ya denga katisiba anji ngawe gwali o mwezi uwede. Chitekeze duanti banji kwa wabuda mi, abeyu na ajumani, baba mbitundu bie bol, nejongolei, mu South Sudan. David Ajang Munyok agama ntiene bane bala badango vude vuga igaye ne basi mamwe vyangua ne vole kera okutusa jolwe bago vya mungkambi ye elegu si walane nsalo ya Uganda ne South Sudan We are running to, from the boat and then we are in today from the border of Uganda we don't have water we don't have food we don't have medicine we are suffering a lot Ebitongo libye njawulo biddu kirira babudami nga mbino mulimu ekyama wanga magatte kibavunanyizibwa ko UNHCR ofisi ya saba minister ne World Food Program <laughs> Aba WFP baga mati abantu bano betage ebintu njolo omuli owokweke ko luba emere amazi ne bilala wabulanga cho kibawe mere mfumbe ya buli lucha ko ne mere yempeke jibayinzo okusimbe ya buli mwezi Singa baba vude mungkambi, nga bafu nye woku veda. Ate yunga tufude yo, rufa nyuma ropa ukana na yali bao mumedika Christopher Thomas. Umako kwede, umambe jomu kulo watolo Ruth Nsemele Komontale. Akumye woku abobwe, okuwa kana ne mili mjejo wanachewa. Nga hita mchibina nche chibatebe, agenda kudoki ya nukulwa ni edembe diyabana. Sako ne edembe diyabachara. Omumbe jawa toro Ruth Komontale, uruwale la chali deka wana watalina muasidizi. Mumaka gatali gamuno mkampala, okuwatu walia kubuyambi. Elango uruwale ero, asoke dentewe chituburu, mumaka gapapas ofanenji omu. My target group is uh, women and children, pretty much, um, and I'll be focusing, uh, of course, in Toro and also in the whole of Uganda, because I believe that as a as a country we need to unite and not just focus in one area. Bwavu de wano, aireke dama kagaba na gashia sinzo bukuru na muguanga, agasa nyu baby's home. Wabula watu wale chifuchino, batege zangu tizi bicho kusula ba na boche yonge denyo. Na dela wano mkampala. Nangangu mwendo guwabana. Sawa suli wa guwe yonge denyo nyo nyo. Uh, Abachalo, baba antu, abazada, abami na abachala. Basinga ndo za buli mwazala, nasula, buli mwazala, nasula. Katibu liwe tuwe la nenamba ze nene. Chibe, ni wankwa denti tuwe wakula bili la abana. Ni ate siche chisinga, tetuwa gala abantu, basula abana, tisoboro kubela na vo. Umakaga na gasa nyumbibizi home goka. Abana basu wa monsambu. Bebali ya tibu wangabalo ndedua buli mwaka. Echidagi ya tijisibu choku sura habana. Nadela baka zari wa. Chichari chine ninyo mugwanga. Chimuli Ivan Chigozi. NTV kusawe mu. Ami angu. Oluwa lero mchitundu cha fecho kubili. Tuwega seku Lorenz. Owe miyake kaga mwetano. Edanga ya kulila government ya miyake jisoba muasato. Okumutambu ila mbigere ya kuno nye simbize. Eza kasimo. Tuwa agensi chiyari ya kulila ku ministry ya biyo buli mientebe. Kone ku Ministry ya Public Service, Edo Lugendo Rafe, Mbwe Ruti, Mbwe Fuwabate. I was taken up to the cow's office and then the cow... Tuwa agenda ku muofisi ya cow, nga ya gala tugeende mkoti, bampe, mpapule zijulileza zirie zambu lako. Choka sentepe wa district inaagano kukunko lako. For regionalizing the appointment... 
ku office za district ya soroti ku local government banji tebaya gala kuogira kona fee but across the road the other side is where i used to work yani tudda kwezo yali akulira mu ministry yebyo obulimi eno nayo ngaba mu manyi naye nga abasinga mu office ya makuru bale kulira da era ne batusindike wo muchara stera mukwano gwe mwe bakolanga i'm florence beka we are coming to you yeah, I know him very much. We used to work together. We are very good friends. Yes, we really worked with him. Ya denga china chogira amazimagali nti. Lawrence, tali naka muogira ko. Era ministry ya public service. Jebite loko kuma. Bamu gambi nti. Alinga gobe mpewo. You bring us documents, we pay. Okukusa sulo ina kusoka kutulete la mpapula. Chino tuchikolo kwe walaba agalo kukumpanyi nsi mbizino. Otherwise, you shall get so many stories. Mkuungero kutege na matamblaga Lawrence, ya jane Kampala, ni tuge na kupublic service, wa mgambi danti, bali kurunyiri raba sopolo kumuyamba, na yenga alina kusoka kudayeri, e wata andikirwa, jaba dama ze banganga agenda, wabula, kukateria inza kumuyamba. So for this case, we are waiting for the documentation. Kunzonga za Lawrence, tulinze mpapula, okuba ministro ebi oguli mije yali akolera. It may help him really and he submits and we pay. Maybe unless if there is a problem, because I don't see why agriculture is not submitting. They are always submitting. Okay, madam. But what I know at the moment there will be problems because we are still moving from Kampala to Entebbe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish you could be to the end up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eda wano, tuwasukira mungi ya tegu uwe chai. Nechugina kushitebe cha ministry ya ibi obuli miyentebe. Aba singa na yaba ali yu nga papia, ilomu Lawrence guya wei mpapula zezimu Robert, yali hageze kukuumula. Okay, so you realize they are, the, the, the appointment and the process they file. So you need your original documents. They must stay with you. For us what we do is just to certify that yes, this is a true document. Aba yu nabote baya gara kugera na fee, ya denga ba mgumi anti, ba inzo kumuya mba, diba wandi kila besoroti. ABMB file ya Lawrence in Kadde atemu kusengula ministry kwe baddeko okuve Kampala waluo kutyanti okujifuna chakitwala kasira no but the file is there file ye jeri era na jira bako mu akuguwedde yeah mm. so what does the file say when you saw it what does it say and then you look through you okay they didn't they didn't give me to go to read but the file was there kati wichi kumpi satu zisewu ngati banna muddamu Mumazima, Lawrence wa kuna nyezebwa, urobu tabana ya daka papula haka muugira ku. When your documents are lost, you report to police. That's the first step. I report yeah. that you stop lamenting that, oh, you see, my documents got lost. For us, we cannot proceed to pay on stories. We need documents. Wabuleche buwezi waba ntunga banu, atenga siba tonu, aniaba yamba, kumkumbiru ya abiona. Florence Dalimba, NTV, kusawe mu. Eyo yembeda abantu chiba itamu okufuna aga simu kabwe kiba bateke dua okufuna. Ketumulimu katondala na emu kuda tukenda kuma wana gavude musike JBM sa nyotofa kwa NTV. The average age of the entire national team is under 18. And the primary role of Team Uganda is to remain, is to Division 2. Probably that's the only thing that can make one or two rugby fans smile that the clubs are doing well. The players have not put on the, they have not wore the game faces. They are not the animals we saw last season because Ferguson had the same group of players and he did deliver the Holy Grail, which is the title. sawe mo enchao na kula mande na kula kukola wabula angatu ya gala mbela ya bude e, kutata ganye so kula be haba gezi gezi sipo gila kuntebeza ya bude yona kuru enchao nothing kills faster and keeps killing for longer
Come on, let us leave. New Mortin Doom Power Guard. Nothing kills faster and keeps killing for longer. NTV Kusawemo, Robo Dea, Wotsobo Dokoma, Onako Rualiro, Nze Patrick Mukasawa, Nakutegeza Kuntandi Kwante, Bwebambo Dila Satu, Langa Rai Rua Mugaga. Sagala Weda Bidenti, Abantu Abasinga, Bagala Nyokolo Rugezi Gezi, Ngabata Gedenti, Webali Rua Mugaga. Bakula Nyo Rugezi Gezi, Ngabali Kubiyo Kulia, Vya Sava, Edano Rugezi Gezi, Kubiyo Kunyo, Viru Njino Recho, Osanye, Okube Gendeleza, Tewedi Kugu Wako, Toja Balaba, Rachi Sukusibula, Tusinka Noro Nde, Sula Bulonche, Weda Ba. Gabriela is trapped in a collapsing mine and she is rescued by Alejandro and underneath the rubble they fell in love. Beautiful and iron willed. I told you a thousand times not to put your hands on me. Your mom working in a mine is nothing for you to be ashamed of. In fact, you should be very proud of it, honey. But her destiny will be marked. Alejandro's ambitious mother becomes her worst enemy. She was cast into prison, and all that she was left with was her memories of her son. Going. And the woman. Now, she has to forge a way to revenge on the other side. change of government won't stop a thing i've run out of fingers counting the number of multinationals sitting up here what about the three companies that announced their plans to launch last week i say they're shortly me i'd be looking to sell at what price more much much more I don't know who you are, or how you know these things, but one thing I'm sure of, you're in the wrong job. Here, call me tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'd like to hear more from you. Are you ready for your big break? The East African, understanding the region. Morning at NTV. A very good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Morning at NTV, coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Hotel rooftop. My name is Brian. Standing by at the NTV studios is Mabel Kebirunji, that is at the International Conference Center. Simon Cassiati and Joel Senyonyi will be joining me later for the press review and the big story. Newspaper, check. Coffee, check. Especially if you're an Arsenal fan coming back from a weekend that was not really very good. <laughs> and uh, looking at the Crested Towers, some people already uh, g going to work early at this time. Time check, a minute after seven. Let's get this show on the road with our question of the day. Good morning. <laughs> There you go. Name the countries that make up the East African community is our question of the day. The first five respondents will each walk away with a mag courtesy of morning at NTV. And of course, feel free to reach us on these avenues. Twitter at morning at NTV. My handle is at mbgold2. I have Mabel Kebirunji's handle is at mnebkeb at joelsenyonyi at 
uh, Kasiate and you can uh, walk away with one of these you can place at your desk in your office. Now, we also have the Facebook page, Morning at NTV, about 3,400 3, uh, people that like our page. Go there and like our page and let us know what we should do to improve this show. Most people don't like this day, but I think it's the favorite day of the week. You have plans ahead, you have the day ahead. Let's get you started. Mabel Kebirunji at the NTV studios with the stories that are making headlines. Good morning. Good morning, Bran. Thank you very much and welcome to Morning at NTV this 10th day of February. We do hope you had a wonderful weekend. But moving on to the headlines, the NRM caucus in Changkwanzi endorses President Museveni to stand for the presidency in 2016. President Museveni has promoted the UPDF's commander in South Sudan, Colonel Kayanja Mohanga, to the rank of brigadier. And police in Kampala have arrested ringleaders of a gang of hardcore criminals. You're watching Morning at NTV. According to a press statement from State House, the NRM caucus has unanimously endorsed President Museveni to stand for the 2016 presidential election. The proposal was mooted by the Northern Youth MP, Evelyn Anite, and supported by the entire group of NRM members. Solomon Seranja reports. The NRM Parliamentary Caucus has proposed that President Jerry Museveni, who is also the NRM Party Chairman, stands unopposed as flag bearer in the 2016 general election. If this position is adopted by the highest party organ, the Central Executive Committee, it could bring an end to speculation of whether the President, who will have been at the helm for three decades by 2016, plans to retire or not. According to a news release by the State House Deputy Publicist Linda Nabusai, the proposal was made by Northern Youth MP Evelyn Anite and was seconded by Makinde East MP John Simboa. The position was resoundingly supported by the entire caucus members during a luncheon held at Ramasindi Abasonga Presidential Farm in Ngoma, Nakaseke District. The ruling party lawmakers said they endorsed Museveni because the president's legacy has been a bedrock for peace, democracy and economic transformation. However, the president did not comment about the NRM MP's agitation to back him for another term in office. It is not clear yet how the likes of former Vice President Professor Gilbert Bukenya will react to this development. Bukenya has made it clear that he will contest the flag bearer position within the NRM party, but if there are any attempts to block him or rig the polls, he will throw a hat in the ring as an independent candidate in 2016. President Yori Museveni has promoted the command of the UPDF troops in South Sudan, Colonel Kayanja Muhanga, and the chief of the internal security organization, Colonel Ronnie Balia, to the ranks of brigadier. The UPDF spokesperson, Lieutenant Ankunda, says Colonel Kayanja's promotion is a result of the UPDF's defeat of Riek Machar's forces in South Sudan. Yeah, when we came in here, there, 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 there was a lot of killings taking place, especially in the areas of... Uh, the areas of Agut Magur, the areas of Gemeza, in the areas of uh, of Palek and Bol, because the enemy had uh, the, the enemy had taken control of these areas, and there was a lot of looting, a lot of pillaging, a lot of, uh, of killings. This is Kayanja Muhanga, the overall commander of the UPDF in South Sudan, who spoke to NTV from a tactical base at Juba International Airport this week. Ugandan should not get worried. Uh, we are in control of the situation where we are in the areas where UPDF is. It's in control of the situation and uh, there is no problem. The situation is calm. Kayanja has since then been promoted from the rank of Kano to Brigadier after his exploits at the treacherous battlefront in South Sudan. An experienced fighter, Kayanja last month inflicted the heaviest defeat on Dr. Riak Machar's forces during the battle near Gimeza as the UPDF marched towards the restive town of Bo. Colonel Kayanja has been promoted for exemplary performance, particularly having crushed the Riak Machar ambush at Gemeza and for killing a rebel brigadier who was commanding that group and taking the UPDF to Bo and capturing it. <laughs> Former 
by the commandant of the military police. Kayanja has been in the battle trenches for a while. He recently commanded the Ugandan contingent in the war of Egypt, Somalia. Kayanja also fought in northern Uganda against the LRA and was part of the Alpine Brigade that defeated the ADF rebels in Renzor Mountains. President Yoel Seven has also promoted internal security organization director General Nibalia from the rank of colonel to that of brigadier. Well, brigadier, but here now, it's, I think he's been doing an excellent job in ensuring internal security and providing very useful and applicable intelligence to the state. And so the president has appreciated his work. I beg your pardon. The spokesperson is Lieutenant Colonel Paddy Ankunda. Now moving on to Kampala, the police in the Kabalagala suburb have arrested a gang of youth that's believed to be behind the spate of robberies that have been happening across the country. The police describe the gang as one of the most violent they have encountered over the years. Suhail Mugabe reports. These 16 young men are believed to belong to one of the most feared crime gangs in the country, commonly known as Chifesi Crew. They were arrested on the city outskirts in the suburbs of Kabalagala, Kansanga, Busabala, Gaba, Deje, Machindi and Naweru, where they are believed to have hideouts. So we have managed to scoop them out from wherever they were. We have them here, they confess, their commander, so-called Ninja, is all here, they, all of them are here. And the operation was basically successful. The men are also accused of carrying out violent crimes such as assault, housebreaking and robberies, as well as petty theft. They were arrested after the police launched a joint operation with the community members. It is also alleged that some of these young men wield knives and guns when carrying out robberies. The police also recovered a car that this gang of men is said to have been using in their operations. He came with a, he came with a gun, yeah? uh -huh. and uh, he came with a, with a car, yeah? uh -huh. and I take that things. Uh -huh. He has, he gets, he first sits in a meeting. Mm -hmm. Now we are going to steal this and this and this. I will be such and such a point. So that immediately they grab an, an, an iPad or they grab a phone or whatever they have grabbed. Or, or this, this, this laptops. They run straight. We have several files against them. But we shall choose the heaviest. So fight is aggravated robbery and murder. So the techs are going to team up and then they find the, the highest, the, the, the bigger, the biggest. The police raided hideouts of some of the ringleaders along the dusty road to Ndeje, where they found the loot kept by suspects like Joseph Sempa and Isaac Nsubuga, who is also known as Ninja. The young men were found with household items ranging from 21-inch television sets, subwoofers, fans, DVD players and mattresses. Baba batwala baba twali. Fichitono nyo. Baba batwala baba twali. Kwa basinga no tumala ke mirembe. Tukera kola basinga tumala ko mirembe. Bwe ba muyise na gana okugulawo. Kati yekwe kuwala ampe nyumba na ayagalo kuita waguru kubati. Dilili ya mulabi eri jize bwe edit. Ya yuziza. Ya yuziza. Bwe yagamba kola muri mukye. Ya ngamba tunda nsene ne. Ne mugambe nsene ne season bwe rigwawo. I'm here at the residence of the third suspect in Naweru Lugoba and as you can see, the police is carrying out a search looking through the property trying to find any more incriminating evidence. The arrested suspects are helping the police with the information that may lead to the arrest of their partners in crime. Suhail Mugabe, NTV. Interesting there, a suspect assuring us how he can't steal small things, but only big ones. We now return to the Kampala Serena rooftop uh, for Brian, I beg your pardon, yeah, Brian, Simon and Joel for the press review. <music> Thank you.
A very good morning on this 10th day of February 2014, coming to you live from the rooftop of Kampala Serena Hotel. It's we, morning at NTV, ready for your press digest this morning. I'm with the usual suspects as always, Joel Senyonyi and Brian Mulondo. Good morning, guys. How is the Monday morning treating you? Awesome, awesome indeed. Uh, I don't know about Brian, he's an <laughs> Arsenal fan. We might need to commiserate with him, but you will be fine. <laughs> we'll start from their headline story in the Daily Monitor from the back page. A picture of Arsene Wenger tripped, falling down. He looks Honestly. very despondent. <laughs> and the caption to the picture is Arsenal's season tech stumble, <laughs> and so does Wenger. Wenger did actually fall down, literally, at the Liverpool Line Station. Even if it were you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of I'm feeling safe because uh -huh. on Friday I kind of preempted that I'll be eating my words wow, today. you're consoling so yourself. Bit, um, but you never mind, this, eh? but you never nice mind this humiliating loss of hmm. Arsenal to Liverpool. Arsenal fans continue to endorse their great coach, Arsene Wenger. Oh, and yes. so does the NRM caucus that sat over the weekend in Changkwanzi over the last couple of days. They have endorsed President Yoweri Museveni as yet their flag bearer for the 2016 presidential polls. And this time round, he should come as unopposed. It's the headline story in the Daily Monitor this morning. I imagine uh, Professor Bukenya must be a very disconsolate man. He's uh, nursing presidential ambitions, <laughs> and so are other people. So they're thinking, eh, this is a hard paper. But uh, we wait to see how things pan out. What does this out. say about the NRM? Doesn't it have people who are able to be presidents of this country? Well, and, uh, like uh, someone has argued in the NRM, it's uh, a, a team of very able and uh, industrious and competent people. But they believe that President Museveni is the ex-competent, is the top dog and should always lead them. So and, when do uh, the others stand out to be counted? Uh, well, well, you and I are here. Maybe one day we <laughs> shall see that coming to pass. In the front, and you're in yellow, so... <laughs> <laughs> Later on in the show, you'll understand why I have a yellow scarf to my, uh, uh, to my jacket. The front page of the Daily Monitor has got an interesting picture of General Moses Ali. Yes, General Moses Ali, his wife, meeting not the Ayatollah, but the Pope, Pope Francis at the Vatican. Mm. Pope Francis expected in this country sometime this year. General Ali, our third deputy prime minister, says he was extremely humbled by this pontiff's humility mm. and humbleness. It's in the Daily Monitor this morning. Someone was joking about... Uh this last week that the people who are arrested during the pope's visit mm. are still in prison so we don't know how many people will be taken to prison uh, well if you are if you are, if you're common nuisance that is possibly what comes your way <laughs> the u.s government informed that the government of uganda over the weekend that they risk formating the situation in south sudan to you know levels yet unprecedented with regard to sucking other regional forces and creating a regional war in other words, they were saying, UPDF, pull out of South Sudan. And the government of Uganda has looked U.S. in the eyes and said, we are not getting out of South Sudan. Perhaps maybe to add, until you get out of Afghanistan, Iraq, and all the other places <laughs> you've been occupying for many years. You know, there's, the there's, the there's two angles to this story. Uh, of course, uh, many Ugandans are concerned about our deployment in South Sudan. It's, uh, it's causing some Ugandans in South Sudan some, some trouble and, and that kind of thing and the expense, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. Even though government feels, you know what, if we pacify South Sudan, then we are safe back here because, uh, you know, we, we are neighbors, so whatever happens, the other side eventually trickles down here. But, but you see, we, we, we need to tell the U.S. to give us a break, for goodness sake. You know, they, they cannot think they will call the shots all over the place. Now, do this, don't do the other, don't, you know, they, they need to sort themselves out. You're talking about their deployment in Afghanistan and so on. They've gotten their fingers burnt elsewhere, even though they were told in some places, Please not go. We on ground know what the situation is like, but they intransigently went ahead. So they, they should swallow their pride and uh, perhaps leave us to sort out our house. Well, uh, maybe the U.S. is speaking from a point of experience that they have had such expeditions mm. which have turned out. So why have they not pulled and out? Therefore, this far? they would not want their young, little, mm. wonderful brother called Uganda oh, how, to how find thoughtful. themselves in such a situation. How very thoughtful of our brother, <laughs> or of the U.S. Yeah, <laughs> isn't this isn't this the same excuse that they use? Mm. You know, you go pacify whatever happens mm. in, at, in the neighbor; it may affect you. The U.S. is in Afghanistan because it needs mm. to take care of. Uh, of the US interest. I'm sorry, but, but, but listen to this, uh, even Brian. Mm. South Sudan shares a common border with Uganda. Mm. And we know that whatever foments trouble in South Sudan will obviously have a report. Yeah, that's why there's a bit of a point, really. However, the US, without shame, will go and attack a, a neighborhood, even Sudan itself. Bill Clinton bombed 
in Sudan here, Khartoum. Mm. They have bombed so Africa. they got their fingers banned. Millions of miles away from their common border, all in the name of safeguarding American interests. Interest. Who are they to tell a country that shares a common border with South Sudan to pull out for fear of fomenting the regional problem? Perhaps Should we it? need to define what American interests are. Because Maybe we are talking about hegemony here, and so the mm. Americans uh, will always call the shots across the world. Right. What do you think, Joel, will mm. be the, the, the adverse uh, repercussion if Uganda doesn't heed America's call? You see, let, let's face this squarely, yeah? Uh, ultimately, when it's all said and done, it is, it is this that calls the shots, yeah? For as long as we... Uh, be, we uh, this is... Uh, money. This money. is uh, money, money, uh -huh. money. But, but you see, ultimately, for as long as we continue to be the way we are, run our economy the way we do, and the US and these other countries keep on top, they will always call the shots, whether we like it or not, yeah? Because if, if, if I have got the money, let's assume, yeah? Mm -hmm. I will tell you, do this, and whether you like it or not, you will do it, and likewise for you. But President but, Museveni has said, and his government have said, we won't leave South Sudan. You think they are not aware of this? Of course they are, but, but there, there will be some repercussions, uh, albeit they might not affect the powers that be. You know, when uh, the economy is having trouble here and there, and it's plummeting, the, 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 the top guns do not feel it. It is you and I. But for as long as we continue to be the way we are economically, somebody will always call the shots, whether we like it, or not. So we need to ameliorate ourselves from, from, from the dungeons, like some people like to, to think our economy is. Uh, well, it's probably, probably not that bad, but uh, we, we, we have got to pull up. Don't you love his words? Ameliorate ourselves from the what? Congress. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a developing story that Lady Monte is following for us. They reported that U.S. government did ask Uganda to pull out of South Sudan. Uganda now has retorted and said we won't pull out of South Sudan. So we can only wait for tomorrow's edition of the Daily Monitor, perhaps to get understand what the middle ground is. General Viraro, do you remember him? Yes, he's one of the most recently retired generals from the UPA. He's now gone full-fledged political and has formed a political party with the aim of vying for the presidency come 2016. <laughs> now we have the NRM caucus endorsing General mm, Museveni, mm. who will at 2016 have clocked 30 years in power and one of his uh, generals launching a political party. What are his chances, Joel? <laughs> I laugh because uh, some things are, are, are rather interesting. Uh, many people like to think uh, of him as a big joker, but uh, there are those who feel, wait, wait a minute, this has actually been architected within so that it shows that there is some kind of competition mm. and, and that kind of thing. But, but between you and I, uh, this time round, General Viraro, I, I wish him the best, but uh, this, this looks like a head-banging project. And, and Red Pepper is <laughs> saying Seven is sitting on a time bomb. Uh, that is uh, uh, what the general said. Uh, and they are on a time bomb. Mm. Who well, isn't? Who is the, <laughs> what, what, what would that, the time bomb be? Well, I see him uh, pictured there with the uh, Honorable Mama. And he says things are about to really explode on him uh, and advises him to quit before. Haven't you heard that before? I have heard very many yeah. people say that Museveni is sitting on a time bomb. This time bomb is really taking a long time to, to get off. Mm. The Katikiro of Buganda ended a visit to the Western kingdom of Ankore that doesn't yet have a substantive head but while there he preached coexistence while taking this tour and this story is in the daily monitor Wh let's Why remember that in Mbara, for example uh, has a very huge uh, Ganda population which he drummed up and there was quite a lot of support towards the number of projects that Buganda is trying to undertake here including and not limited to the restoration of the Kasubi tombs you yes. and you, you come from Western Uganda why, why, why did you... Somewhere you, further than that. Further than that. Somewhere you, okay, in the Your Congo. brothers. Why, why were they opposed, for example, to the Kabaka's visit? Or was there such a thing? Yes. <laughs> well, the same people just here in, within his kingdom were opposed mm. to his visit not so long ago, culminating into the Kayunga riots and all that. So there will always be that, uh, you know, uh, contestation left, right and centre. Let's say that the Kabaka is not... But I was going to uh, visit uh, the uh, subject. I understand, so does the Pope, but you have had cases where the Pope will go to places and there will be riots mm -hmm. because of the Pope's arrival. So there will always be people who will express dissatisfaction. Let's not miss our words that the, that the Kabaka is a cultural leader and has got subjects. does not mean that there is a hundred percent unanimity and there is an absence of people who don't believe he is uh, either one uh, bona fide, two who don't believe in the cultural institution that he leads. So mm -hmm. democracy, as you once called yourselves Democrats, is mm -hmm. that you must be accommodative of the respective views whether mm. they are pro or against your views. Some so people clear. like to think of democracy as the suppression of the few by the majority. Well, but can anyhow. you imagine a wedding reception where the chief guest is wearing full military fatigues and cutting with you a cake after you taking a lot of trouble in finding yourself and a wonderful white tuxedo. He but was, that's not the issue with the Daily Monitor class. this morning. There is a story about the Honorable Barnabas Tinka Simile. It got really bloody on his side when he attempted <laughs> to attend a wedding to which he was not invited simply because the top dogs of his party were 
and uh, then he was showed not only the exit but taken right into the coolers. Now, but also the groom is story. his political, yeah, his political rival. He wants to yeah, unseat right. him. But but Rika Simir is also a melodramatic man. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there, there's, there's time to, you know, show yourself and time to relax and say, you know what, enough of this drama. That, that's probably one of those. But then why would a guy want to attend a wedding to which he's not been invited? I mean, guess down the basic mm. uh, levels of uh, decorum mm. and uh, good manners. Why does Tinka Simir want to involve himself in such trivial issues like attending a wedding to which he's not been invited? Does that there's, tell you something about our leaders? There's somebody who made a comment and uh, they, they were aiming it at Tinka Simir. This person said, you know, there are people who were brought up, who were raised, and then there are some who just grew up. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. And someone once scripted and asked, who grew such people? <laughs> Financial officials are fighting over a 12 billion project that could foment some trouble in the Ministry of Finance as te top technocrats are fighting on who should be on this project within their staff. Now that's a story you can only find in the Daily Monitor with a lot of insight. You remember her, Princess Ruth Komuntari of Toro, trying now to get down to her role as Batebe, that is um, Chief Princess in Toro, mm. and uh, one of her major uh, stepping stones has been getting down into charity and there's a story about her campaign against violence. We do not know which violence this is. Domestic if you want to know, get yourself a copy of the Daily Monitor this oh, morning. She, she's focusing on gender-based violence mm. and, and uh, well, I think it's a good uh, place for her to come back uh, to speak against something that she faced during her marriage. Is this going to be an aspiration for, for many young girls? Well, it's a, it's a good comeback for her, like you say. Uh, but uh, of course, we need we need to see how this stops. Uh, it is, it's not a good thing when we see a, a man cutting off his wife's limbs just because he had she sleeping with the other, and you know. But there are men being battered also. Yes. In Busoga, I'm told the Busoga women forgive me if you are out there. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> so it does happen to men as well. Right. Brian, what is in the inside pages of the day of the red paper this morning? Well, of course, uh, uh, another look at uh, the retreat at Changkwanzi and the red paper on uh, page four saying Seven and Babazi in drama at Changkwanzi. And uh, after the prayer, uh, a couple of youthful MPs started shouting Babazi's name and they were excited to see him. <laughs> our man, our man, they were chanting and the president was very disturbed. Again raises the question, is the president actually safe? Mbabazi or Tafide in the power corridors, are they a threat to the president? They are, even though some might think a mundane threat. Uh, there are people who, have, who keep talking about this queue that we do not know about. And uh, apparently, Honorable Mbabazi has always waited for his turn and mm. now it seems to be in oblivion, you know. it is. What are the chances that he will take the presidency? Let's assume that mm. this report by the Daily Monitor and the... Uh, red, red paper is true this morning that the NRM caucus did endorse President Museveni for yet another term coming on from 2016 to 2021. I, I, I imagine uh, that gave a bit of a headache to uh, Right Honorable Bumbabazi. Uh, in, in my view, he's probably not come out to say. I, I think he's nursing ambitions for, for presidency mm -hmm. and he's probably thinking, hey, now this looks like a very hard paper. This, this, this thing is being snatched away from me, but, but the tides could change. I don't know how it... One day in politics is a very long time. There when you, you get go. down to the further inner pages of the Daily Monitor this morning, there's the next magazine, an interesting story of a father found after over three decades wow. of disappearance. The question is, do you know your daddy? Mm -hmm. Some say you know on uh, the deathbed of your mother or something of the sort. Healthy living this morning, we're asking a question from the Daily Monitor. Is your child getting the best of the nutrition? Now, we see many of you adult males taking to the gym and running the streets of wherever you live in the bid of keeping fit and toning down that tummy. Question is, are your children any better? Are you feeding your children the right stuff? A headmaster of a Kampala school recently intimated that her biggest challenge is not how well her students and pupils are performing, but the size, not in population, but the physical size of her pupils. Obesity is becoming one of the huge challenges for especially you parents, and the teachers that look after your children. The question is, is, are you feeding your children right? You know, in Uganda, sometimes we eat like we have been hired. You know, you find somebody eating supper and you're thinking, hey, what is this? And again, it's only in Uganda where people will drive to the gym to walk on a treadmill. Uh -huh. that? <laughs> but also, you know, I've, I've, I've realized most parents will get up, uh, go to work early with their kids. Mm. And then you when do they about get Simon, time? Because his daughter is seated there. Well, Why are you throwing Simon the works out. Simon mm. works out. Ah. He runs every morning. Right. Thank you. you. Now, uh, do, we mind, uh, Kampala, Serena, okay. do we mind not making me the subject of this because I am not, um, I am not quite the role model for be best right. people here? <laughs>
Uh, Let's get down to an interesting uh, a reportage of sports in the Daily Monitor this morning. Cobbs, and that's in rugby, that was telecast live on NTV, of course, yes. nowhere else. Cobbs break the Chadondo hoodoo, and that's mm -hmm. what they call it. They beat the MTN and his and A nice way for them to celebrate, uh, you know, they are 50 years old, and it was such a, a very good climax to uh, the celebration. So I think it, it was good for them. Of and course, the story part. that is bringing tears down every Premiership supporter's cheeks is the Liverpool thrashing of Arsenal. And this is a story whose details <laughs> can only be found in the Daily Monitor in as much as Brian <laughs> refuses to be dragged into this debate. I don't want to call it thrashing. <laughs> Guys, no. Yeah, I, I'm glad that don't you understand the thrashing. word thrashing is an understatement, Brian. <laughs> so we are trying so hard you know, sadly, to find a way that we uh, in, in, in Kenya, there is a Liverpool fan that was stabbed by an Arsenal fan. Some, sometimes you people take sports to... I don't know, very, very extreme levels. These guys no, argue I, that. I, I love Arsenal. I've always supported Arsenal since I was a kid. But of course, mm. the extremes of some fans is totally. Uh, I want to borrow the word you use bollocks. You do not pay for a season ticket. There are mm. people who pay for season tickets in, in England. And those are the people that are allowed to do such things. Well, let's drop the Arsenal talk, Brian. Tell us what's in the 3 a.m. pages of the day of the Red Pepper. And the particular us, segment and is waiting for you. Can uh, tell, uh, right? Absolutely. You know, intelligence briefing. What is there? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> they say the NRM bosses dying to be ministers. Named. And then Simon Mulongo, Moses Balieku, <gasps> Vincent Bajire. My heart almost skipped My heart almost skipped a bit. No pass. Not now. Right. In the recent RDC uh, reshuffle, mm. we saw many young people that were also appointed as RDC. Mm. Is the president uh, finally realizing that his old counterparts are... But he did the same but with the last he... cabinet reshuffle. You know, the minister of the presidency is quite a young guy. Yes, the minister yeah, without portfolio many... is a very young guy. Uh, you know that uh, we've had uh, younger people in cabinet coming on to take on serious positions. R uh, Rose Namanja, the minister of information and national guidance, is quite a young person. So mm. clearly, maybe there's a move towards getting younger blood into cabinet. But that we can only speculate until mm. we get to see the final cabinet list. Because now, the that... even, I, I mean, ultimately, we, we, we need to see how, how do we do work for, you know, youth generally. But yes. but again, most of these that were appointed, in my opinion, uh, they, they look like rewards. You know, we were talking the other day. These are the ones that have been very active in Bimezas and right. that kind of thing. You know, you see, I think a friend of but, mine, but, Patrick Asimo, yeah, and I was thinking, yeah, but you well, see, well, 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 Joel, people watching us are asking themselves, how mm. come it's Brian, it's Joel, it's Simon taking mm. on the press review on NTV's morning mm. show? Mm. For one, it's I mean, not because we are the best at it. Well, Talk for yourself, but one thing is for sure: we've mm. exhibited ourselves certainly, such certainly, that NTV uh, caught, uh, you know, caught our eye and brought mm -hmm. us here. So clearly, people have to go out of their way to earn those appointments. So we should not whinge and whine because somebody was active. Yes, he no. was distinguished. So himself. But the point I'm making here is because you see, uh, it, it, again, in my opinion, the, yeah, the creation of positions of RDCs were really to reach out to. Okay, are people that are very loyal, they've lost uh, MP positions and that mm. kind of thing. Mm. You don't want to do that. It's a heavy burden the taxpayer is having to grapple with. And, 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 and like I said the other day, you know, the, the job description of uh, RDCs is, is, is an equivocal one. We, we, we need to come out clearly and say, okay, what, what are, are these guys earning their money? What exactly is their role? Great. And yet. that comes, uh, brings us to the end of our press review this morning, the 10th day of February 2014. We're coming to you from the rooftop of Kampala Serena Hotel. In as much as Brian desisted from showing us the picture of the stumbling Wenger, that's a huge... Uh, full page uh, color in the red paper this morning. We'll call it a break <laughs> and of course come in with a big story of the day. The average age of the international team is under 18. And the under. primary role of Team Uganda is to remain is to Division 2. Probably that's the only thing that can make one or two rugby fans smile that the Cubs are doing well. The players have not put on the, they have not wore the game faces. Mm. They're not the animals we saw last season because Ferguson had the same group of players mm. and he did deliver the Holy Grail, which is the title. I'm going to blow your mind and I'm going to twist your test parts.
the flavors are already coming together. I can I can feel them. Ah, very lovely, very appetizing, very healthy. Remember, the way you see it, the way you like it, is the way you get it from my kitchen to your kitchen. On the next episode of La Patrona. I just can't stop thinking about that drunk Fernando. Something tells me that, that this time he was telling us the truth. Um, sincerely. Do you really think it's true what he said? Now you're going to blow up. You blow up. What do you think? Having you for a mother has been the worst curse. Respect me, Fernando. I was the only one who saw you injecting him and I did nothing. You're a murderer, a miserable murderer. Be quiet, just shut I up. I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. I'm arrested on the contrary. I set him free until his hearing starts. Well, check on, just finished arresting him. This is a violation of my rights. You can't do this. I'm a free man. La Patrona. A, a wife who you got through the office will be very insecure about you working in another place. Always hunt up. Don't hunt down. You want? You mean what? Go after your superior? How dare you suggest? That when a woman is aggressed against, we should look at the person who's been aggressed against. Let the couple be. Let them sort out their issues. When they need you, then you come in. Prostitution is being given a new brand. All I know is that I connect people. Some call it skinny dipping, others call it chitwe. If it's a principle for you, then the cookie should not hold you hostage. Let's not choose to open our zips and do whatever our urges, because I don't think that an urge is stronger than your will to say no. People attach a lot of questions, shame to HIV. I do not believe that when you wear a short dress, you should be around. Marrying your wife is like having assured sex. Anytime you come, you must have. Yes. You raise a population that has no clue how to be men. Can you bring out a quality family? I don't get married for my family. Men, every Wednesday only on NTV. You're watching Morning at NTV. Welcome back. I do hope you enjoyed the press review as much as I did. I know later on in the show, uh, many of you out there will want to have Brian and I because we are Arsenal supporters and we lost badly over the weekend. I can't actually wait for that segment. But you can be a part of the show. Do send an SMS to 6565. Follow us on Twitter and tweet us. Our handle is at morning at NTV and our Facebook page is morning at NTV. Do leave a question or comment and uh, we love to hear from you. Now we will return to the Kampala Serena Hotel rooftop to Simon and the big story. <laughs> A very good morning once again. We're coming to you live from the rooftop of the Kampala Serena Hotel this morning, the 10th day of February 2014. And it's the big story. I'm sure all of you watching us have a handset, a telephone handset in your hands or in your pocket, like myself here. And this is what we call the mobile. In Uganda, they call it Akasimu Ka Buriwendi Nkufuna or Akomungaro. So they call it. And so we're asking ourselves this morning to what extent has this? Handset, mobile handset changed your life, my life, everybody's life. And to what extent has it destroyed your life, if I may ask? And this morning, of course, to join us, we are looking at the biggest telecom player in the market, MTN. And who else to feature with us this morning other than the chief executive himself? Good morning and welcome to Morning at NTV, good Mr. Mazen Munre. Good morning to you and good morning to all who is watching us. Too. Very good. Now there's about 15 million uh, uh, subscribers to mobile telecom in this country, of which MTN has over uh, or close to 60% uh, market share. Uh, tell us how it feels having all these people on your network for starters. No, definitely uh, the telecom sector is growing uh, in Uganda, and I think uh, the number of users also increasing uh, month after month. Uh, 
currently there is almost uh, getting to 17 million uh, users mm -hmm. in Uganda, out of which uh, MTN has more than 53%. Uh, uh, the story uh, continue to be successful, MTN continue to leading the market, uh, continue uh, the investments uh, needed to co create capacity uh, to accommodate all the new users. Uh, we are talking about voice, we are talking about SMS, those are the traditional services. Let, but me as stop well. right, let me just stop you right there. Innovation to ensure that those who are on your network get value for money. Oftentimes I pick my phone, place a phone call, and before I know it, I can't communicate further. It's dropped and I've been charged for a full minute. To what extent do you have reports of the occurrence and frequency of such cases? And what does that tell you about the robustness of your system? Okay, definitely uh, this is a challenge that uh, we are facing uh, and uh, let me just uh, clarify to you when your call is dropped, uh, we charge per second, so it means not the whole minute is, is lost. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you know, uh, the, the way that we continue uh, growing in the market, then, then there is a need to create more uh, capacity and creating more capacity it requires expansion and upgrades which require to have some inconveniences uh, for some of the customers. Let me just give you an example. If uh, there is a, the number of cars is growing on the road, it means you need to expand the way. Absolutely. And you cannot expand without creating some inconveniences mm -hmm. during that process. So that's the same thing when the number of users is growing. You cannot say, okay, stop, don't make calls. We need to expand our network. But you, you, start, you, you, you are operating in a country that has got 34 million Ugandans. And about half of that has mobile handsets. Isn't it in your view that possibly you should start planning now for the other 15 million to come on board? So that's about in the next two years, we have a huge inconvenience this year. But then for the next say, 10 years, we do not have a lot of inconvenience as compared to what we're going through now. No, the, the, theoretically, that's right, mm -hmm. but you cannot expand from day one to accommodate 34 million. Mm -hmm. The investment has to continue. You have shareholders, you have stakeholders to engage and involve and convince that Uganda is the right place to invest. Well, your, big, your and, biggest stakeholder and, here is the market and the market has voted you tremendously. No, definitely. Well. Look, I mean, uh, in 2013 alone, we have added more than 1 million users to our network. Absolutely. And uh, we have also a very aggressive plan for this year. In one year only, we, we invested uh, more than uh, $70 million just to put more cell sites and sites everywhere. But that's a cycle we go through it. And uh, definitely, we are in a, in a market where we are continue growing. We cannot compare ourselves to a market where it's fully saturated, where there is no need to expand and there is no need to create some of those inconveniences for the users. To create fairness to those, your colleagues in the telecoms industry who have not had the chance to sit with me here, but I believe that you're speaking on behalf of the entire industry. Previously, we knew the mobile phone as one where I would just place a phone call or send a text message. But right about now, I can do almost anything with my mobile phone. I can pay school fees for my daughter. I can send money to wherever it is. And this is because of the innovation in your industry and very specifically mobile money. Now, there is talk that you may not be an ordinary, you may not be a bank at all. You're a telecoms company for health sake. But in terms of volumes of moving money from one place to another and conducting transactions left, right and center, you are handling a lot more than many small banks in this town. Isn't that putting a toll on your core uh, objective of providing uh, you know, proper telecommunication as, uh, as we knew it from the start? Look, I'm reading a lot of stories about this subject. And uh, look, in, in the new world, uh, mobile money is the new currency. It is not a secret. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, and currently, guess who is our competitor? The banks? No. The fewer companies? Perhaps? No. <laughs> our competitor is the cash. The cash? Cash. So mm -hmm. there we, this is where we're moving forward to compete with the cash. Mobile money is a new currency that we are looking forward that every single user, ordinary person in Uganda should use mobile money instead of the cash. Uh, to create this capacity, definitely we have been doing very well in terms of money transfer, bill payments, school fees, uh, pay for the TV, uh, national water, electricity, all those things. In 2014, our primary focus on how can we make the mobile money more and more the, the primary and the direct uh, payment mode for all the customers in Uganda. So it means you do, we don't want you to carry any more cash. Mm -hmm. We want you everywhere you go, you use your mobile money, whether in supermarket, whether in pharmacy, whether in the clinic, whether in saloon, whether in the club, wherever you go. Tell me, Mazen, don't you, at this point in time, with the success of mobile money, get a lingering temptation to possibly position MTN not as a teleco company, as it is, but as a bank of some sort? No, but let me clarify something. We are not operating mobile money ourselves only, MTN. 
we are the enabler. We have other banks with us who are working with us, who are also uh, our partners for driving mobile money in the country. So MTN is not only alone. Okay, yes, but so uh, you are uh, largely one of the most successful platforms on which mobile no, money No, definitely, is but I'm saying the transactional level and the process for mobile money and the process for, for the floats all goes through the banks as well. So there is definitely a very big advantage for some of the existing banks. And we continue growing and we're working more with more banks this year. I'll give you a personal experience. Many times when I travel to my upcountry domicile, I have so many people waiting to get a piece of the hard-earned cash I make in the city. And previously, I would say, no, 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 I am uh, doing so low on cash, but let me go to the bank, pick the money and bring back. Oh, when I return, I will pay you. Now, they simply tell you, send me mobile money because Correct. they expect that you have money there. No, and then you've not had similar complaints of people saying you're making them less liquid than they possibly mm. always posted to be. No, no, definitely. Uh, look, uh, it's the mobile money, the banks, uh, for somehow they went very slow. Mm -hmm. I mean, the partnership between the banks and the telecom is strategic. We cannot drive this product alone and the banks also cannot continue and sitting alone. So it has to be mutual partnerships between the telecom and the banks to take this product forward. The banks cannot exist everywhere. They cannot go to the remote of the remotest areas in Uganda where telecom exists. So that's the kind of partnership that the banks and the, and the telecom need to work together how can we enable more and more uh, cashless uh, nation in Uganda? Let's get down to the proliferation of the internet. Beyond sending across, uh, you know, voice services, now you are into data. And indeed, from wherever you can get an MTN network, you possibly are able to get some internet connected to your phone if you paid for it. To what extent is this proliferation of the internet uh, feeding into the general development of creating this to be an e-country where everything is done online, more or less. Okay, let me just tell you something like uh, MTN now is the largest uh, uh, internet provider in Uganda. Mm -hmm. So uh, although we are known as a telecom, as the voice and mobile money, but we are also more than almost getting to 3 million uh, users, okay, subscribers. 3 million subscribers are using the internet on monthly basis through MTN. And that's only the subscribers, so definitely many of them, they are sharing this with the, with the others. So the number of users can go more. Uh, this is where we're sitting now, and we know Uganda is uh, one of the most youngest generations in terms of population in Uganda. So we have to create this platform to enable more people to use the internet services. And as you know, uh, the level of development for any country is determined by the number of the people who are using the internet. Well, uh, for the people who manufacture beer, they always have a close themselves that cannot be served to people who are below 18 and there's always responsible consumption. So the same with, uh, uh, you know, companies that produce cigarettes. With you who provide internet services, do you have a cap to what extent this internet proliferation is used to do the right things? Don't we use internet to rob people? Because many times we've seen people use your platform to send spam messages and you know uh, cause a lot of conning. We've seen people con others using mobile money. We've seen a lot of irresponsible citizenry facilitated by a wonderful network like you provide and the wonderful products that you provide. To what extent is MTN concerned about the growth of crime on the platforms on which, uh, which you provide as an innovation to the way life is led? Look, uh, we we are we have almost uh, nine million subscribers now in uh, in Uganda, and you know. On a monthly basis, all the 9 million subscribers have a free uh, quota for internet access. So having the internet is not only to pay for it. So we have already a promotion that started like two years back where every single user has a quota, almost 15 mega, to be used on a monthly basis. But uh, in terms of having uh, access and security uh, that can manage the, the level how people can use the internet in the right way, we have done a lot of it self-initiatives which can control uh, uh, the process of having making sure people are writing using the the, the, the the internet however this is cannot be done by only MTN yeah but for you MTN specifically what exact to what extent are you uh, putting across responsible usage of your platforms no the, we, we how have, much do you facilitate the law enforcement agencies for example correct uh, in terms of MTN systems already have uh, many protocols we put in place which we can control the usage uh, in terms of uh, which uh, areas that can people access for the internet. However, this is also continue in collaboration with other stakeholders in the country, with the lawmakers and with the other regulators 
that really need to work all together how we can take this policy to the next level. Uh, Mazen, you're Africa, not answering specifics of my question. I know you would love to give us all these glowing tributes and wonderful figures that MTN has put in place, but we are looking at the specifics of protecting your customers from unscrupulous uh, members of the same society who use the same platform to fleece them off. No, but I mean, I'm saying that MTN has already have uh, built-in protocols in place mm -hmm. where a certain traffic uh, cannot be accessed through the platform. However, this Let, is... Let's speak in a language that the guy watching us on TV will possibly understand. He has been asked, that he's been called and uh, informed how he's won some money off some promotion using an MTN number. Or he's been sent a message saying you've received so much in mobile money, but it wasn't meant for you, kindly send it back to me. Or he's uh, been sent, or his Facebook has been hacked into from his mobile phone. You know, things like that. To what extent can they get remedial uh, action from MTN as a service provider? Look, I mean... Or tracking we, for that matter. People, when they receive a message like that, we already have done a lot of education and we continue to do that. If only message that coming with empty and uh, tag, that's where we are sending. Apart from that, it's not our uh, messages. But so, let me maybe put it this way, Mazen. One African proverb goes and quoted from one of the prolific African writers known as Chin Wachebe. He said, the more the hunters learned how to shoot without missing, the more the birds learned how to fly without patching. Every day, MTN puts in place a lot of wonderful security innovations. But this, to the same extent to which you are innovating to put across wonderful security is the same speed at which unscrupulous people are innovating to beat your system. How is the risk for wonderful security of your network going from where you sit? Are you finding it a difficult market, Uganda? No, it's, it's, it's not an easy job here. We have a building uh, uh, behind of you. We have uh, a group of engineers who are on daily basis putting more uh, new protections. Mm -hmm. And uh, more, uh, definitely it requires more education from us and awareness, whether on social media, whether on radio or TV. Uh, we, we continue doing that. But the main message is uh, people should not respond to anonymous messages. People should only respond when there is a message uh, tagged with MTN. Nobody can tag on behalf, our behalf as an MTN. When they see MTN in their messages or in their emails, means there is something could be serious. And definitely our call centers and our service centers, but more interesting now, we are more active on social media. People can contact us. We continue creating more education, more uh, awareness about how can people make sure that this transaction coming uh, from MTN Street. Mazen, uh, recently the UN declared uh, internet access as a human right. And MTN went off in a huge campaign saying, yes, you have um, declared this a human right, but for us, we continue to offer it not only as a human right, but one of the pillars that drive our business. To what extent are you making that human right, that is internet access, uh, affordable for the ordinary folk, beyond the middle class, which you seem to entertain much more than the ordinary folk? Uh, two years back, we launched a campaign where the UN uh, uh, has declared the internet is your right and everything. Now, uh, for the last two years, uh, we have made a lot of efforts to try to make the internet much more affordable. Currently, at this stage, every Ugandan has uh, a 15 megabyte uh, quota on monthly basis granted for the first one week of each month. That is Some small. argue that that is possibly a drop in the ocean, but nonetheless, no, a welcome no, no, drop. But, but that's 9 million subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> 9 million times uh, uh, 15 mega, it's a huge. Uh, plus, the tariffs for the internet access in Uganda is, if we, we can say the cheapest, but it's one of the cheapest in Africa. So this is where we are, where, where we think... Talking about cheap even before I can let you finish your point, there was a time when you just joined this market. Of course, uh, telecom uh, access was extremely expensive. And every day we see the price coming down and making it more affordable. But again, you find a huge section of the population arguing that possibly being on your network and even being on the, you know, on the mobile network is quite an expensive feat. For the most part, many Ugandans have mobile phones, but they possibly do not use them to generate income. They use them as a way to spend the income, many of whom, may, 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 much of which they don't even have. Look, this is, could be a perception because uh, maybe our brand looks very attractive, very visible. Uh, MTM, everywhere you go, people think uh, we are the most expensive. We are the most affordable. And the evidence that our market share is growing. Mm -hmm. You cannot say we are the most expensive, we, our tariffs are increasing. However, people are continue joining us. Uh, all our services now available in, in, in many areas that uh, people have not yet, other telco have not been able to reach there. 
Uh, in 2013 alone, we have added more than 120 different new areas, coverage areas, outside of Kampala. And we, we see on daily basis the number of users, how they are really signing up for our network. Mm -hmm. So there is, there is a perception that this network is very expensive. However, with our product offerings, like the MTN Zone, which offering uh, dynamic tariffing, dynamic discounts. Yeah, where well, uh, you have got to make a cheap phone call only if you wake up at the, in the dead of the night. No, no, Mazen, no, no. I can argue with you. what does the future hold? Because we've seen MTN putting across a number of, uh, you know, futuristic innovations. But clearly, the future continues to glow and glow in the direction that you will be the drivers of how life is lived. So what can we expect from you in the near future, in the middle term, and of course, in the long term, in terms Look, of innovation? There the, the are two areas. Uh, we, we continue uh, working toward uh, leading the delivery of a new, bold, digital world to our customers. Let me just make it simple. We want uh, our customers, we want our users to be connected to the internet all the time. That's that's our direction. We want them to do online shopping. We want them to book online. We want them to pay the bill, pay taxes online. Yeah, but one thing is for sure: the voice call shall always be the hallmark of a mobile telecommunication, uh, you know, service in this country. For example, we love to talk. We love to hear each other speak. So, to what extent shall we? ever get rid of this voice call droppages? It's taking time, but however, uh, uh, making data call or making internet call is also in improving and increasing. We have seen in 2013 only, last year, 100% mm -hmm. increase in terms of users of the internet. How about the competition between your SMS platform that costs uh, 60 shillings off peak and 110 shillings uh, uh, intranetwork on peak, as opposed to internet-based SMS services like WhatsApp, and uh, Viber and all the other places. Is that taking a toll on how much you are earning as a company? No, definitely the SMS, uh, definitely the, the tendency now, people are using more the social media to communicate. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why we are focused on how we can make the internet much more affordable and available. So you... Which, you, which you, we are seeing the you, SMS... You are appear to lose on the SMS platform, but you quickly no, run to where no, uh, the social media is uh, applying uh, and you provide. Definitely, it. Definitely, definitely. Let's look at your social corporate responsibility or corporate social responsibility as someone want to call it. You are, of course, very well known to sink boreholes, to raise um, uh, billboards wherever we go in this country. You can't miss the yellow MTN color and your wonderful logo. But again, there is always talk that you may be as generous as you appear, but you certainly give back a drop compared to the ocean that you actually fish out in terms of proceeds. To what extent is that certain or sentiment true? Look, you can't look at corporate social responsibility as just one way of giving back to the community. Being a successful business in Uganda, mm -hmm. being contributing largely to the income of the government. Okay. Mm -hmm. Currently, the telco in Uganda contribute more than 6% from the total income for the government. 6% from telco. And imagine if MTN have 60 to 65% of value share. So what specifically from MTN contributing back to the income of the government. That's only on the economy level. But however, on the corporate social responsibility, we have our, our MTN foundation. Already there is a formula in place, 1% uh, profit after tax dedicated for uh, foundation projects. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. People plus, believe that 1% is... No, 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 no. 1%, believe me, it's, it's, uh, it's an amount that we are trying to fulfill all our promises and our expectations, plus all the proceedings that we get from all the other events like the MTM Marathon mm -hmm. or the 400 uh, 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 million that we got last year. Uh, you you plowed it back. For, for, for we called it back to the communities. And this year we are going to Karamoja definitely to deploy all those projects. Very finally, Mazen, of course you're operating in a situation where the government needs to provide you certain basic amenities for you to be able to operate. Number one, the infrastructure. Number two, of course, this country needs to churn out the kind of manpower that you would need to carry operations out. Now, I'll start from that point. To what extent do you find the infrastructure in Uganda supportive to your network? But also, when you look around, of course, you're famed to have such a wonderful workforce, people that are proud to work for you, but also you've got a huge expatriate community in MTN pushing certain products and services to ensure the business is viable. But to what extent are you moving towards Ugandanizing the operations at MTN? And this is no offense to you as non-Ugandan. We are saying, do we soon expect to see an MTN CEO that is Ugandan? Let me try to answer your question in different level. MTN is not only for you to make uh, voice and SMS and data calls. MTN, the infrastructure we are putting on the ground, have created an environment for the new businesses and for the new investors just to plug and play. 
like the fiber network that we are putting in place, the data center that we are putting, the cloud service that we are in place. This is only an environment where the new people coming to Uganda to enjoy the existing infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And definitely we are sharing the infrastructure. All the towers that you see across now in Uganda already been managed by a third party company which creating capacity for others to come and also use the same towers. Now looking at uh, MTN alone, as, as you have seen, uh, we create a lot of job uh, opportunities. We believe uh, half million, at least half million Ugandan are benefiting directly and directly from MTN. Now from Uganda only, we have more than 12 people, 12 Ugandan holding senior position within MTN group. So it's not only about having a foreigner coming to Uganda, we have almost five people only in the whole MTN in Uganda who are foreigners. However, we have more than 12 Ugandan holding senior position outside. So it's, it's not about skills being bringing here expatriates, but rather we are about rotation of uh, skills across the MTN group. Don't you love the way he's answering his questions? Of course, this is a man who's got 18 years of experience in the telecommunications and information technology industries at very senior levels. His name is Mazen Munure, the CEO of MTN Uganda. And of course, that was it for the big story this morning as we discuss the opportunities and challenges in the mobile telecommunications industry in Uganda. Now we're taking a short break when we return. It's Simon Says. It's say that if you can't beat them, then join them. Not so long ago, perhaps 18 years ago, 15 years ago, many of us in Uganda never imagined the time when you could get to your kith and kin or carry out any transaction from the palm of your hands. Today, we cannot even imagine life without a mobile phone. But that does not mean that all the 34 million Ugandans have a handset in their hands. Of course, let's not forget that there are children who should not be using these gadgets. But let's talk about the adult population. Now, many of you have argued that, well, why should I have a mobile phone that has all these uh, health adverse effects or that will consume all my cash and therefore you prefer to walk to the bank and queue up or you prefer to pay a visit where you would otherwise have called to find out if the person you're going to visit is there. So many times you walk there only to bounce simply because you've not embraced telecommunication technology. Now, like I said from the start, if you can't beat them, join them. It's high time we all realize that the world has moved so fast and the rug has been pulled from under our feet. We need to get down on the information highway and be a bit modern so that we are able to keep our lives and transact our businesses from the palms of our hands. It's a wonderful morning. Have a wonderful time as we continue to give you wonderful segments. Morning at NTV. We'll be right back.
can smell that liquor on your breath. Because I've been drinking. I, I do this for the love, so this is non profit shit. I'm, I'm bored walking, so you can call this monopoly. Log in. MTV so magnetic. Bobanga daro ya galo kunyo muntu tabiranze. I don't even know what to ask you because I just feel like I'm, I'm standing next to Juliana. But now the sugar, the salt, the type of water, the best in order to promote all the sectors that you've got. For the glitz and glamour of Kampala's most flamboyant people and events. The exclusive, woo, I love it. I'm so shown bored up right now. Log in only on NTV. Have a baby by me, baby. Be a millionaire, I write the check before the baby comes. On the next episode of Rational Heart. Your number isn't mine. It belongs to a colleague of mine, an oncologist. I notice that you have a small nodule on one of your testicles. And you should check this out as soon as you can. There's no way. Good morning. Are you the wife of the criminal banker? The explosion in the kitchen? Was it Leo? I'm almost positive. And I'm only adding up the times that I know. It's the third time he's tried to kill me. The third time. I won't let him try to kill me again, Dad. A rational heart. To my hall, someone came from my back and was cow. To get dog with a kitchen. Young man, you might be. Well, I can go to the go to the same way. I went to the nursery and asked why. Why is it that our father is negative and for us to are positive? Every time I find a story of assault of one person to another, I get disturbed. My own beach or rather, to say whatever cookies. Now, the positimum to Mutja Wanga and Jokesa. In a chair for China, Charlie Chapulaman of Murubuto. The Irene I know just loves music and loves to sing. I've never seen her even smoke a cigarette. The days of legal trade in slaves are history, following its abolition in the 1800s. They tie you like this. That's when I started getting past. Everybody has a story, but yours will only become our story when you share it. collapsing mine and she is rescued by Alejandro and underneath the rubble they fell in love. Beautiful and iron willed. I told you a thousand times not to put your hands on me. Your mom working in a mine is nothing for you to be ashamed of. In fact, you should be very proud of it, honey. But her destiny will be marked. <laughs> Alejandro's ambitious mother becomes her worst enemy. She was cast into prison, and all that she was left with was her memories of her son. Going. And the woman. Now, she has to forge a way to revenge on the other side. You're watching Morning at NTV. A very good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are joining us from this is morning at NTV, coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Hotel rooftop. And the time check right now, six minutes after eight o'clock. And if you're just leaving your house, you've reached your office, thank you so much for joining us. And right here is where you can kickstart your day, your weekend, uh, especially Arsenal fans. But we are recovering, we are recovering. And uh, join us, of course. Wherever you are, you can also send us a, a, a picture of uh, traffic 
We've already received uh, these pictures. We're compiling them later. We'll be uh, letting you know what roads to avoid. Uh, but uh, feel free to tag us at morning at NTV on Twitter. You can also Facebook us uh, morning at NTV uh, page. Go there, like it, and uh, tag a picture. Or you can uh, send a message to 6565 and let us know. Just a, a quick um, a run through uh, in the messages that you have sent. And of course, you can let us know on these avenues what we should improve. Um, someone reacting to the big story that we had, the CEO of MTN was here a couple of minutes ago. Let MTN give us DSTV mobile, as in Nigeria, by MTN or in Kenya by Safaricom. And uh, Darius uh, Tuikirize John saying, Good work, Mlon and Kevin Runjo and team. Afoya Matek, Amari NTV. We love you in the north. Oh, thank you very much. Amari Do. Is that how they say it? Amari Matek. <laughs> I think that's how they say it. Uh, Mayende Carolyn Bang says, These mobile phones have made me spend a lot. Airtime, texts, and also, it's made me a little, uh, it's made me a little liar. But it's been of great use. That is paying bills, making money transactions. Um, Sander saying, good morning, Mr. Mlon and your team. We love your program so much here in Masindi. Good day. Wow. Masindi, we love you too. And hopefully one of these days we should come and do morning at NTV live from Masindi. So we'll let you know. Of course, many of you have answered today's question. I repeat that uh, the, today's question of the day is how many countries make up the East African Federation, let us know. The first five respondents will each walk away with a mag from morning at NTV. Standing by at the International Conference Center is Mabel Kebirunji to let us know who is born today. And if it's your birthday, maybe the call will come through. Good morning. Happy birthday to Thank you very much, Bran. Indeed, we here love to celebrate with you on your birthdays. And today, it is Sophia Nababi's birthday. We, she is in Katikamu SDA, and she graduated from uh, Makere University in January 2004. David Sentongo was also born this day, and he holds a bachelor's degree in fine art. And uh, Derek Balinda was also born this day in 1989, and he went to uh, Makere University. Do let us know your loved ones who were born, and uh, we will celebrate with them. The SMS line is 6565. You can also let us know about the show uh, wherever you're watching from. We love to hear from you. Right now, we return to Brian at the top at the rooftop of the Kampala Serena Hotel for Everyday Life. To tag us on our social media, uh, A very good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, some people are making some very cynical jokes about us now. What? Well, we, I, I don't know what, what to say really, but uh, we are coming back. We'll beat Bayern Munich and take the trophy. So all Arsenal fans stand strong. Surely we went through seven years. This is just a, a small loss. But <laughs> I'll recover, I'll recover. Now today on Everyday Life, remember every Monday uh, we have um, business and we talk about money on the show. And according to business critics, the serving culture in Uganda is really appalling. And statistics from the Bank of Uganda indicate that the, no the number of the population holding accounts in the banks is 4 million only with a savings of GDP ratio at just 16% compared to our regional counterparts. Today on the show, we'll be looking at how we can work on our saving culture as Ugandans, the challenges, and what we can do to make sure that whatever money you earn, a portion of that will be saved. But before we go into that, take a look at the profile of our guest today.
Uh, Charles, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to be here this morning. Uh -huh. yeah. The last time I saw you were uh, together at the Uganda Bureau of Standards uh, Awards, and uh, yeah. you really made a very moving um, keynote speech <laughs> about what, <laughs> what people uh, need to do to make sure that they maintain quality. That's right. And uh, what exactly do you do? Do you do all these keynote speeches all the time? Well, Ochicha has been in, in a game of uh, changing the lives of uh, ordinary citizens, mm. be they Ugandans, other Africans, or even people beyond the continent. Mm. My duty has spanned across over 27 years now. Wow. Giving advice on financial independence, mm -hmm. on enterprise development, and on how to create brands that run across decades and centuries. Right. How uh, you are... Executive Director of Enterprise Uganda. Yes. What exactly does Enterprise Uganda do? Enterprise Uganda provides business development skills, specifically to micro, small, and medium-scale enterprises. Mm. We've done this since 2001. And in the market today, as several brands, several individuals, with economic transformation is owed to Enterprise Uganda. Right. Well, uh, for a long time we've had people saying that uh, one of the problems of Africans, especially uh, Ugandans, mm. is that we are still poor because we do not take off any money off our incomes mm. to save. In your work, what mm. have you seen as some of the issues that, or the challenges that Ugandans have? Why is it hard for us to save? Saving is um, a behavioral trait. Unfortunately, it's a behavioral trait that comes with the pain, denying mm. you certain rewards. Right. Denying you opportunity to prove to the public that you are at a certain stage of uh, economic status. Mm. And given that it is behavioral and it brings pain, it becomes quite a challenge to embrace that kind of a behavior. Right. Because, Brian, you'd love to get this kind of a suit and buy one every month. Mm -hmm. And each time I see you and I compliment you, the next thing you want to do is to go back to the same tailor, mm. same shop, buy another one. Then come back again, get a compliment, go again, I compliment you. Right. But as you do that, you are really trying to pursue what I call an, a game with no end. Mm. There's no one time when we can tell you that now, Brian, please, leave those, uh, those suits are enough. In the meantime, you have denied yourself other options that could probably give you a foundation right. for continued rewarding of yourself long term. Right. Uh, is, it, is it that uh, Ugandans, do, <laughs> are they, do they want to cut off that rewarding? Do, don't we want to forego a few things? We want to always spend. That's why we don't uh, save any money. I would not want to say Ugandans cannot be changed in terms of attitude. They can embrace new ways of looking at things. And at Enterprise Uganda, we've been able to see young people, rural people, educated, non-educated, actually begin to save. Right. The key point here is to give people a few things you can hang on as you go into the behavior of saving. And you need to embrace these principles and ensure that they become part of you. Right. Because the beauty of saving, or the difficulty about saving is that the rewards tend to come long term. And who wants to wait long term to begin enjoying? Are we patient enough to wait? That is the problem. The late Mulwana said there are three things Ugandans must embrace in order to improve the economic uh, uh, empowerment. Mm. And one of them, he just said that Ugandans need to handle their lifestyle, a lavish lifestyle which is not sustainable, a lifestyle for which you know that if somebody who gave you the resources yesterday went off and you are left alone, you won't be able to continue with that lifestyle. Yeah. So he said one of the things about Ugandans was the desire to go for a lavish lifestyle. And when I talk about lavish, even a poor person can go for a lavish lifestyle. If you can't afford milk every day for breakfast, uh -huh. and you are pretending to get milk every day just because a neighbor is doing it, you're on a lavish lifestyle given your circumstances. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about a lavish lifestyle from the way Mulwana was talking about it, Make no mistake to imagine that it's a Kampala thing. It goes across the entire society. Really? 
And then he talked of another thing related to that, and these two both come to a saving issue. Mm. Another thing he said is that we are not persistent or patient. You want the lifestyle today, now. but yes, we could give it to you. Mm. But why don't you first leave the foundation to build up? Then you begin to cream off the, the profits from a solid base. There you enjoy the good thing, but it's also within your control and it is something that you can contain. A reference is, is made to uh, we, are, we are the leaders of tomorrow. What if that tomorrow <laughs> never comes? What if I'm saving and, and, and uh, a story is told of a man that was fishing yes. and, and he had been fishing for a long time and this guy said, why am I waiting? All this Yet I can enjoy the fish now and yes. still rest. Interesting scenario, but here is the reality. Who has got the control about your tomorrow, your departing from this planet? Who? It's God. It's only God. So in the meantime, plan as if you've got eternity ahead of you. If you are going to be planning, not, one, not knowing what will happen the next time when you are crossing the road, you could as well just lock yourself in your room. Mm. So surely having a short-term outlook is not something for people to transform their lives, transform their communities and their nations. Never. Right. right. Um, you have heard of the word that um, people often cite and they sometimes limit the interpretation of, of that citation. Mm, mm. They say when they quote Proverbs in 29, 18 that uh, people without, my people are dying because of lack of a vision. Right. Now, a vision should not necessarily be only from the presidential level. <laughs> At your level you must have, vision, have a vision. And Brian, a vision means not a vision of hours, not a vision of days. Mm. A vision is endless. Long term. So please, let's not go for excuses that make us enjoy the eggs that should have been hatched so that in the future you have got more eggs to enjoy on a continuous basis. You've talked about living a lavish lifestyle. What yes. are the excuses? Uh, because one of the excuses I find is... How do you tell a man that earns very little to save? Well, what? first of all, he's earning little. There are others who are not earning, and they are alive. And what, what are they that, saving? What does that say? If somebody who is not earning anything is alive, and is laughing and sleeping, snoring very well, what does it say? This consumption spectrum can be as long as you want it to be. Mm. And I can give you an example of education services. Mm -hmm. Today somebody will say, I can't take my child to a UPE school. Another one will say, no, I will not take my child just to an ordinary private school. I want Green Hill. Somebody will say, no, no, not Green Hill. I want international school mm. in Kampala. Mm. Then another one will say, no, no, Kampala international schools are fake. This is a conversation I had with a Ugandan. He said, you better go to Nairobi or Johannesburg to wow. get proper international schools. Somebody again will say, no, 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 no. Leave out international schools in Africa. Go mm. to France. So you see the spectrum? Now, where do you position yourself along the way? Who does not want a child to be in, in, in a, a, a private school in, in, in France? Yes. <laughs> I would have preferred that. Yeah. But can you sustain it? Mm -hmm. And if you can sustain it for primary, how about secondary? Can you sustain it? How about university? Can mm. you sustain it? Mm. So ask yourself, to what extent am I living in a realistic manner? And pitch yourself. And here is the beauty. Mm. Where you pitch yourself today is not necessarily where you'll be in another five years down the line. If your savings have been going to a stage where they yield you more returns, mm. over time you begin to harvest the benefits right. and harvest them as long as you may want to harvest them. Later you'll be talking about the principle, some of the things that we should be following. But if you're just joining us, I'm with Charles Ochichi, who is the Executive Director of Enterprise Uganda, and he's letting us know what we should do as Ugandans to save. The year has just started a couple of uh, weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Parents were saying, what are we going to do? Christmas has taken all the money. And there <laughs> was a secret. <laughs> what have you been doing all this time? Uh, how come you didn't have enough money to save? Now, there's a popular image of people who don't save for the future as lack of self-control. But the reasons as to why it's hard and uh, it's less to do, it comes with the scarcity scarcity of jobs, scarcity of money. What do you do in such a place? Someone argued that, you know what, the government is not helping us to provide jobs, so we don't have anything to save. Uh, we can't earn, so we can't save. 
Uh, it makes it difficult because our thoughts constantly go back to making ends meet even when trying to focus on saving. Research significantly says that the person has less mental capacity to address a problem when he is poor than when he is well off. Mr. Ochichi, mm -hmm. the principle of saving. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I once had a, th these boxes of coins. Yes. And uh, every spare coin I had, I put in you put box. it in a box. Yeah. And at uh, Christmas last year, yes, I realized I had 350,000 shillings. Brilliant. And you didn't feel the pain. You didn't feel the I pain. I didn't. Uh -huh. What can Ugandans start doing now that at the end of the year, it's January, someone can start now. What are those principles, those key fundamental things that we can take on so that by December 31st, someone will open that, that safe and say, wow, let me use the money for this. First of all, I want to say that um, for you to develop a saving culture, you must have a goal for which you are saving. If you're just putting money in a box, and at the end of the month you find 350,000, and you have no plan on how to utilize it, immediately you cross the road, you see a pair of shoes, it's mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. Many people tend to save with the destiny of Christmas. And by that time, somehow they have some money, right. and they blow it up. But they have taken 12 months saving, and because they had no specific goal for that saving other than eating it, mm. finally during the festive season, it went and didn't make a great impact on their lives. So the first thing is have a goal, and a goal should be one that in future returns benefits to you economically. It can be an investment in form of livestock. Mm -hmm. It can be real estate, it can be an enterprise. It can be any other form of investment for which there will be an improvement in its asset base. Mm. The goal is key. Number two principle on saving is have a company of people who have got a similar mindset. Individuals will influence you without your permission. <laughs> when I talk to you, Brian, and all the time I'm talking about the quality of my shoes, I'm talking about my shirt, I'm talking about my watch. I'm, I'm influencing you without you accepting that I'm doing it. Yes. The conversation you have on a daily basis, the one you love talking on a daily basis, what is it about? If it's consumption related, there you are. Mm. You go that route. Mm. The, the kind of people that you associate with, according to one quotation, says you are the average of three people you love to associate with on a daily basis. Who are they? And every human being, being a social being, has got those three. Right. Go and check who they are mm. and find out their lifestyle. That's you. So, first, have a goal on how you save. Number two, get people who reinforce that kind of a goal. Get the right company. Right. Number three... Uh, uh, quick, are you so, because one of the things that I check myself is to find people I actually respect. Yes. If, say, if I come to you and I know Ochichi tells me to save... I know, I'll, partly I'll do it because I respect Ochichi. Very good. Very good. So, sometimes they use a word, a mentor. Sometimes mm -hmm. they use a word, somebody you respect, an elder. The people for whom you feel you are guilty if they found you making a mistake. And that kind of a fiber, mm. moral fiber, is in every human being. Mm. There's somebody that you feel, if this one found me doing this, this would be wrong. When your doctor gives you certain instructions, mm -hmm. when you see that doctor and you have been in a wrong kind of uh, lifestyle, you immediately feel the guilt. So mm -hmm. have those kind of people to increase your level of guilt right. and hence a desire to shift your behavior. That's good. So yes, uh, a purpose, mm -hmm. a investment purpose, company, and the right people. Mm -hmm. mentors, mm -hmm. but also bring another thing managing public opinion because the company will be your, your your friends can be there with you in in 24 hours maybe for only 60 minutes yes. the rest of the time you are with other people who mm -hmm. will be commenting mm. and their comments enter your ears and when you go back to your bed those comments come back ringing everybody is saying oh my god i have been having one pair of shoes for the last <laughs> one year <laughs> how many people insane. said it's only one person who said it or two. Mm. But if you want to justify 
why should you spend money and get a second pair of shoe? You make that remark look like a mountain. So yeah. you say, everybody is saying, oh, it's just one pair of shoe. How many people said it? It was just one person who was passing. I saw you in this <laughs> shoe last time again in the party. Oh, it's a strong shoe, but even last time you had it. <laughs> you go back with that pain. Yeah. But here's the message, manage public opinion. Why? One, the people who have made a comment have no idea about your plans. They just make a comment and they go away. Mm. Two, they are not necessarily experts on when to buy shoes. <laughs> they are just making a comment and they are going away. They are not cobblers. They are not. <laughs> <laughs> Three, they are making that remark to fill the vacuum of conversation. They have to say something. But they did not do homework before they uttered the word. Right. So they just see your teacher, just make a comment and go away. Mm. They have not been doing research on behalf of a teacher on shoes. No. Right, right. So please, public opinion, public opinion, public opinion That's again. a very strong thing. Simple but real. Mm. It drives you to make decisions. And one of the things, if you start talking of exaggerated things like everybody says a teacher is taking his children to cheap school. Every, well, we, were people in the stadium, Nambole Stadium or Mandela Stadium, and they all said, today we are going to comment on Ochichi. Did mm. they gather there? No. None. Mm. But how does Ochichi try to avoid an expensive bill on education? He has to create a statement that makes him justify his spending. Right. So the statement will be everybody. Mm. Everybody is concerned. Yeah, you, you feel like you have to get the backing of everyone to do something. Yes. Right. And it depart from what the inner voice is telling you. Mm. And that's the beauty about a human being. We have got two voices. We have got what we call the internal voice. Still, whispering, solid, honest, but it's whispering. Right. Brian, do it. Over time, it will be okay. Brian, do it. Continue. A very great story started like that. But then there's this external voice whereby one passing individual makes a comment and Brian says, everybody... So the external voice is loud, domineering, and tends to be exaggerated. Right. That's good. So just fight those two. Right. Mm. Well, uh, if you're just joining us, let us know what you think about uh, the saving culture in Uganda. What makes it hard to uh, help people save? Are you saving? When was the last time you saved? Please feel free to let us know on our Twitter, our Morning at NTV, and of course our Facebook page, Morning at NTV. You can also send a text to 6565 and let us talk about these issues. What about for uh, companies? What, what exactly do you prescribe for? Businesses. Businesses. Businesses are also living, I mean, they are, they are, they are also entities in their own right. Mm. But again, they depend on the leaders. So for a business to be able to save, it comes down to the leader again, the owner. Mm. or the board, or the management. And the first thing you must begin to appreciate is that um, be it a company, be it an individual, where are the records that you generate mm. about your resources? Mm. If you have got no records, you begin to become completely controlled by emotions. You will rush and open the next branch. You will rush and recruit the next employee. Mm. But if you've got records, they tell you, oh, is this the time to take on a second employee? Is this the time to take on an accountant with a degree in accountancy? Or I can in the meantime continue to have my records kept in a manner without what you call a balance sheet income statement. But I've got sales, I've got, um, I've got uh, expenses, and I can calculate randomly on the basis of that. Most companies have been blamed in, in, the, in, the, in the hope of saving money. They will... They will they will fire people, they will lay off people, <laughs> and they end up spending more money. What's... <laughs> I, I've never understood that. <laughs> you know, when it comes to um, financial issues, it's easier to try and attempt to switch off the tap when you're a leader in a, a company. It's much more difficult for you to open the tap and just say, how can I get my employees to bring the resources that we can then later mm. share? Because mm. that's hard work. That's mentoring. That's capacity building. But just dismissing is the easy route of saying, you have dismissed <laughs> you, and then today I'm, I'm not paying any salary. Right. You've stopped paying salary, fine. Right. But is that giving your customers more value? Because customers are not going to come and choose you because you have reduced employees. 
customers are still asking, where is value for money? Right. Are you giving it to them? Right. Are you giving them emotional connection? If you are not, it doesn't matter whether you have reduced your staff from 100 to 2, they are not bothered. And I can say the same thing about your tribe, mm -hmm. your age, your gender, your, your location. Business, people who buy from businesses do not buy because of your, 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 your emotions. They buy because of their own emotions, their own decisions, and they are saying, I'm going to be comparing the solution from Brian to the one from Ochichi and right. I make my independent choice. Right. Well, I, I guess a, a tip for you, if you're starting out your day and you're a CEO of a company, you definitely have a lot to learn this morning. Charles Ochichi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I, I'll call you back and you'll give us some tips on how you can start a business yeah. because you're also very good with entrepreneurship when it comes to Enterprise Uganda. And I uh, will be letting uh, you know. Also, follow up on the youth fund where that no problem. went to. <laughs> anytime. Yes. Anytime, and uh, anytime. feel free to join us <laughs> on our social media platforms, <laughs> Twitter, Morning at NTV. And let us know what you think. How can you start a saving culture this morning? Coming up, the traffic report. Stay with us. It's only 27 minutes on to 9 o'clock. Thank you so much for staying with us. You have about 27 minutes if you're late to be at work. And you can tweet us a picture. You can Facebook a picture. You can also WhatsApp a picture. Wherever you're stuck, let us know uh, where, uh, what we can tell people. And uh, we'll be able to make sure that uh, we tell people what roads to avoid. Uh, someone on our Twitter page saying, Brian... You guys can use this app called roadconnection.com to do that. It's a crowdsourced traffic info app. Thank you so much. We'll definitely look up this app and where you can upload your pictures. It's called roadconnection.com. Sir, and uh, this is the person who is a tech, a tech freak. So <laughs> we shall definitely look it up and let, uh, and let people know about that. But uh, we have some pictures coming in. And uh, from Namirembe Road, uh, someone, Peter sending us a picture on, uh, to Namirembe Church so you can avoid that uh, road. Uh, we also have uh, more pictures at Gaddafi Mosque. And uh, we have another picture coming in from Bakuri. Bakuri. So the road to use, I guess the alternative there is the road between, um, before you go to Namirembe Church, there's a corridor there that you can take, and it will lead you to uh, the road next to Mengo Senior School, uh, the Total Petrol Station. If you're coming into town, you can also go straight down via Bukasa Road, and you can you land on the road uh, leading to Star Polo Kangwa Road, and uh, you can get into town, or use via Makere College School, or the... Uh, Market College hostels and you can access traffic. We also have a photo coming in from old Kampala police stations. Lots of border borders and cars there. Wow, thank you guys for coming, uh, for sending these pictures. Uh, James uh, sending us a picture at Chiseka Market. It's full. And uh, another picture coming in from Odanki. Odanki and it says Ginger Road is thick. So lots of uh, lots of lots of uh, pictures here now some news coming in right now is that a taxi has uh, just uh, crashed into the subway restaurant near crested towers another accident wow i don't know if we can get a picture of that but news coming in right now ladies and gentlemen breaking news is that a taxi has just crashed into the subway restaurant we'll give you details of that and more in the coming uh, news bulletins but also we'll try and get those images and play them before we get out of here news coming in right now again breaking news a taxi has just crashed into the subway restaurant and uh, stay with us as we give you more details of that but for now we'll head into the sports with isma
Uh, Isma, a weekend that was full of surprises. Arsenal, KCCA, uh, I had a very bad weekend. What do you have on the sports menu today? <laughs> uh, good morning. Uh, of course, we'll be talking a lot of, uh, of the Arsenal uh, being beaten by five goals uh, at Liverpool. We'll do a bit of the KCC winning uh, in Sudan. We'll also have a chat about the basketball awards on, that took place on Saturday night. And then the game we showed here on Saturday, that was Cobbs beating the Heathens. When you stay with us, you'll get this and more. subsequently in our news updates please stay with us and you can get but obviously right now you need to avoid uh, that place if you can uh, we, are, we also have got another picture at mid parkers it is uh, loaded with lots of traffic and of course uh, again a taxi has just crashed at the ginger road traffic lights close to the crystal towers we'll be giving you more information coming up your morning at ntv sports update stay with us The average age of the international team is under 18. And the and primary role of Team Uganda is to remain, is to Division 2. Probably that's the only thing that can make one or two rugby fans smile that the Cubs are doing well. The players have not put on the, they have not wore the game faces. Mm. They're not the animals we saw last season because Ferguson had the same group of players mm -hmm. and he did deliver the Holy Grail, which is the title. collapsing mine and she is rescued by Alejandro and underneath the rubble they fell in love. Beautiful and iron willed. I told you a thousand times not to put your hands on me. Your mom working in a mine is nothing for you to be ashamed of. In fact, you should be very proud of it, honey. But her destiny will be marked. <laughs> Alejandro's ambitious mother becomes her worst enemy. She was cast into prison, and all that she was left with was her memories of her son. Going. And the woman. Now, she has to forge a way to revenge on the other side. So, the funny about Valutado, Abana Bangi Batwa, Riva Abekika. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, will you acquire a Bible here? A Jacusomida being to Gaya Walo was. For example, what will controversy are you? I'm a suit at the Kamukan. We now could better coach him. Better coach him. Wanga, who saw me says to Mazem Yakabi, to some Sabad Nay Uganda, I demiria Mulimani, or Lucy Novoso was over Bolina. Now, what have you done about Ganda? Abaganda Vagala Kabaka. <laughs> a, a wife who you got through the office will be very insecure about you working in another place. Always hunt up, don't hunt down. You want you mean what? Go after your superior? How dare you suggest that when a woman is aggressed against, we should look at the person who's been aggressed against. Let the couple be. Let them sort out their issues. When they need you. Then you come in. Prostitution is being given a new brand. All I know is that I connect people. Some call it skinny dipping, others call it chitwe. If it's a principle for you, then the cookie should not hold you hostage. Let's not choose to open our zips and do whatever our urges because I don't think that an urge is stronger than your will to say no. People attach a lot of 
questions shame to HIV. I do not believe that when you wear a short dress, you should be a rat. Marrying your wife is like having assured sex. Anytime you come, you must have. Yes. You raise a population that has no clue how to be men. Can you bring out a quality family? I don't get married for my family. Men, every Wednesday only on NTV. Eighteen minutes on to nine o'clock. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're just joining us, morning at NTV, coming to you live from the Kampala Serena rooftop. Before the break, we had Charles Ochichi uh, I, for an everyday life, and he was looking at the saving culture in Uganda. A few are principles that we should follow. Make sure you have a goal. Surround yourself with people that will have the same conversation as you, and try and manage public opinion. Let us know on our Facebook page. And uh, Twitter morning at NTV, feel free to tag us at Mebkeb, at Dakabachigonga, Joel Senyenye, at Kasiate, and at MB Gold 2. Of course, tag at NTV Uganda and let the conversation continue on those platforms. Now, if you're just joining us, also breaking news coming in right now. Information reaching us at this moment is that a taxi has just crashed into uh, the roundabout at the yard. So we have that picture on the screen for you and uh, there's been an accident if you are heading over there probably you might want to get another route uh, probably pass via Kolo airstrip up there uh, maybe that's the route you can take but a taxi has just has been an accident at the yard and that picture on your screen right now and that, that's the news reaching us of course the correction earlier we had communicated that uh, it had crashed into the crested uh, towers uh, subway a uh, correction it is at the yard ginger road traffic lights and uh, that's the news we'll give you more updates as and when the information comes in but on to sports isma thank you so much for joining us uh, a weekend full of surprises arsenal going down I, do, I can't say thrashing it's a big conversation of the weekend i got so many phone calls the point that i switched off my phone but also kcca winning away and uh, Victoria University using, losing. Yeah. First, KCC and Victoria University, how optimistic are you uh, on both these things advancing? I, I think, first of all, there's a very bad history of Ugandan sides playing from outside here, yeah. uh, including the Uganda Cranes, the national team. Mm -hmm. We don't seem to win too many games away from home, but when KCC went to Sudan and won that one, uh, when I was getting the feeds coming in from Khartoum, I, I was thinking, okay, yeah. is this real? Because they scored both their goals in the first half, beat Elbrick yes. by two goals to nil. And I, I, they, there's something about uh, KCC that even without the optimism going into the game, especially uh, uh, with the nature of how Ugandan football has been in recent times, and the kind of preparation we, all, all of us as journalists, we went on and on about how El Merik had been uh, training in the Middle East and had to play Bayern Munich, the biggest side in the world at mm -hmm. this point. And then um, uh, when, you, when you, the result comes that KCC are beating El Merik, you're thinking, okay, what did George say they get right? right. And it's unfortunate that we couldn't watch the game uh, because that's one other thing that we speak from a perspective of only knowing the result and not know, knowing how good the performance yes. was. I remember one when KCC did well in the CAF Champions League, the same competition in the 2008-9 season. They traveled to South Africa to play against Super Sport. Um, they, they drew that game. But actually, uh, one of the people who were in the stadium came back and told me that this was a 0-0 massacre. <laughs> um, the, the result was exactly not what it was on the pitch because right. KCC were outplayed mm -hmm. and then they just, could, they just didn't lose the game. Right. Probably something similar happened in Sudan. Pro, and El Merik will We be, took our opportunities? Yeah, it took the two opportunities. Haman was getting one of the goals. A, a prolific goal scorer. I wonder why he's not been part of the Chan team mm. for the Uganda Cranes there. But KCC should have a very good chance of going through. Uh, now that they, have that they will win this game here? Uh, they don't need to win it. They only need to draw 0-0. Zero, zero. But the biggest problem I have with uh, such, uh, such results is that it's very possible for George Nsime to bring his side home and go for 0-0. Zero, zero. Mm. You're giving El Merik the ball in that circumstance. So I think probably when they come back home, when they score just one more goal, then El Merik need to score three. That will be enough for KCC right. uh, to go through. Then on the other hand, you talked about Victoria, Victoria University. University. Yeah, on, on their debut, three goals to nil, I think they're out. I think they're out. And uh, probably the lead up to, the, uh, to, the, uh, to this uh, 
to their continental debt wasn't very good. Mm. The suspension of Dennis Guma, Savio Kabuga, and uh, Mike Serumaga seems to have affected the team. You yeah. don't have that kind of bad publicity going into such a big game. So, Wasn't it wise for them, given the, the, the fixture they had, to call back those players and maybe suspend them after this <laughs> game? This was a crucial <laughs> game. Probably you don't. I, I don't think that you call them back. Uh, I believe that the best way to handle this is if you don't let it go out to the media. Because there you can handle it internally. All clubs, uh, all kinds of companies mm. uh, have their problems. I'm not saying NTV2 has. Mm. Uh, but mm. you don't let it out to be a discussion in public forums. Now, the moment you let it out to the media and tell the media that Kabugo and Guma have not returned to training, Mike Sermaga was out drinking, that means that you've got to expel them from the team. Right. The point is that you can only protect them, you protect the image of the club by not letting that news out. The moment you let the news out, then you must take this punitive action like they did. Right. Mm. Well, uh, moving on to rugby, a fantastic. Five years of heart in the league ended with Cobbs beating the rivals, Heathens. 14 to 13. We, we uh, had that game live on NTV. Uh, we brought that game live to you. It was phenomenal. It was really, I guess, by Ugandan standards, <laughs> we were world class on that day. Uh, what an advert this was for the game. Is Cobbs actually, is this the greatest season for Cobbs? Uh, probably not yet their greatest season mm. because back in 2006 they played uh, in every competition and won each of them. They won the league, they won the Uganda Cup, they won the seventh. So uh, they are probably not yet at the level uh, right. which they did in 2000 and, uh, 2006 or the level that uh, Heathens managed to achieve back in 2009 and 2004 when they could go and win every competition. But this is for me a stepping stone. If Cobbs come to the Uganda Cup and play as well as they played in the league, mm. it could turn out to be their greatest season, uh, I've got to say. Then you, 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 you talked about the, the advertisement that the, you got, the game got. First of all, for everything that has gone around with the league, that Cobbs had won the championship yeah. before, before playing Heathens, before trying to win a challenge for the first time in the league in five years. Yes. The amount of fans that came there was amazing. Because w w a game that of little relevance, and the manner in which Cobbs celebrated the result, you would think this is the game that decided <laughs> the league title. Yes. And probably for all the fans who came there and those who watched in their bedrooms, in their living rooms, it was worth everything. The kind of, this is the kind of finish you want because Cobbs were by far the better side on, mm. on all grounds. Mm. But somehow, for everything they had done, Cobbs were trailing 13-11 with about three minutes to play. And yeah, they have a penalty. And of all players, you would think, okay, there's Justin Kimono, there's Oscar Kaliango, there's all these players whose names you can throw around and know. Those have won games for, even, for Cobbs before. And then the boy won in the game. Adrian Casito was in St. Mary's College he the last year. He's only missing his sixth vacation. Right. Comes on, kicks the penalty, and Cobb celebrated like it meant everything. That's a, so that was a narrow win. A very, very narrow, narrow win, win by a point. Hmm. And actually, when, when I look back, I think Cobbs, have had a, uh, Cobbs and Evans have had a bit of this. I remember one which was my best moment in sport back in 2012, the Uganda Cup final. Hmm. Joseph Arendo kicked a penalty and Cobbs won 14-13 in the final minute. I also do remember one back in 2009 between the two clubs which Cobbs won 21-19 in the league and actually ended without either side knowing who had exactly won the <laughs> result. That's how close it was. Every either team thought they had right. won the game. So they've served up a few of these and this is as close as they could get. Certainly a brilliant future for Uganda rugby there. And we'll be letting you know the next game will telecast. To all the, the guys who are down at Chadondo, thank you so much for the phenomenal work that you did bring the game live uh, on NTV. Mabel? Yes, now moving on to basketball. We had been talking about the awards last week. Now Kami Kabenge and uh, Pris, Peace Proskovia, mm -hmm. you know, winning. Um, I think it was a deserved win, wasn't it? Surely the, the two of them were expected to win. And uh, you're, you're <laughs> ja when you said Kabenge, you sounded like Sorry. the MC. Uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Ikong, who is a Dima power player, was MCing the function. Mm -hmm. And like you, like many people, uh, doesn't call him Kabange. Uh, he's from Co he's Congolese. Mm. They prefer to call him Kavenge. Uh, they <laughs> <prefer> to, <laughs> Kavenge they, is they, Ugandan. Yeah, Kav Kavenge is extremely Ugandan. The two of them, I think, uh, surely expected to win. Probably, uh, while well, well, I sat in that room for this for this award ceremony, uh, no one was appreciated as much as Kami Kabange. Everyone in that room knew who the best player was. It was just a matter of time before the announcement was made. And actually, I imagine in a circumstance where it had not been Kabange, probably people would have booed the yes. MC and yes. booed Fuba for mm. not choosing the right person. Because even when we did that head-to-head, -head, 
you um, know, comparison yeah. of Friday, yeah. it all seemed like it, it all seemed well, coming com com because <laughs> it, even in the decider, they did score 27 points mm. to win them the championship all in their first season. Did score 31 in that series, was averaging 18.5 12 rebounds. So in that in that kind of circumstance, they, they, they can only be one best player. And probably one of the things I took away from the awards that I didn't like what was being done, one, is that for every award there's a second runner up, a third, it's a, a first runner up and a winner. We don't need those in sport. You just mm. come out and read us the winner. Right, and it's that right, simple because right. we all know who is supposed to be the winner in this case. Probably for Peace Poscovia, the problem was that uh, she didn't play all the games in the finals for UCU. She had to travel to Singapore with the netball team because she doubles up as a netball player and handball. She's probably one of the biggest women person mm. sports personalities in this country. So she missed a few games there in the finals. Uh, there was a bit of a dampener to that, but eventually, the awards passing without incident. The news wasn't at the top. The news was at the bottom. The yeah. MVP for the regular season was from a team that finished 10th in the league, yeah. uh, Bernardo Como. The MVP for the women was, wasn't from a team that went the entire regular season and beat yeah. a new CEO. So there were a bit of those dampeners that by the time you left the room, you, you, you had a frown on your face. But at least you, in, inside, there was a lot of happiness for Kami Kabani. Right. Okay, I, I don't know. Should we talk about the Arsenal Liverpool game? Maybe, I, I don't maybe know. in 30 seconds. In 30 seconds. <laughs> what went wrong? And unfortunately, there's a picture of Wenger falling down at the Liverpool station. You mm. know, he fell down and they were saying, it's just nasty. What? Can Arsenal recover from this? First of all, the only you can recover, one of the things I remember for most of the managers at this level, uh, that be bearing in mind the amount of competition you face, is that uh, managers already say, it's very easy to forget the bad results mm. because you can't refer to them. So you just move on and treat yourself like nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happened. That's, that's the best And let's treat it like that. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. You'll probably give more detail on Omumuri <laughs> and yes. sports bar. But let's move on to Blatter. Yes. <laughs> Saying... You, you really don't want yeah, to... I, I really don't want to talk about... And we are probably <laughs> showing you the, the goals that, were, that we... But uh, let's, let's just... But probably, <laughs> let, let, me, let me add one thing, Brian. Let me add one thing. On this show on Friday, I did warn you that Liverpool start their games at Anfield like a house on fire. Right. And for me, I thought that any club that is going to beat Liverpool, especially in their home games, you've got to start well. The moment you let Liverpool score in the first 15 minutes, regardless of how poor they are playing, your chances of winning, if they were at 40%, they did not to 10%. Right. Because Liverpool are one of the best teams uh, when they start games. As to very poor defensively, they're giving away the ball. And probably it's important that Brian, like you say, we forget about this result because Arsenal have to respond. And the response is on Wednesday night against Manchester United. Mm. And for me, that is going to be more important. When, when, when this show last week we discussed the next fixtures that Arsenal have, they have to play Bayern Munich, they have to play Man City, they have to play Chelsea, they have to play Everton. And this was going to be the first fixture. And this was going to be the fixture where Arsenal said, lay down a marker. Now, the marker they've laid down, they've not laid down a marker for everyone else, they've laid down a mark on themselves as we'll a poor team. To, 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 as a poor team on Man yeah. oh, Well, uh, Dakaba, I, I, I want to leave it at that. <laughs> you will, you will uh, make sure you catch him on Omumuli at 1.30 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. for Sports Bar, live from Club Silk. Uh, but definitely a very, very um, bad weekend for uh, Arsenal fans. He'll also be looking at Blatter and whether... At uh, this point, age and uh, being able to work, they have a relationship. I, Blatter giving out information that, well, he's probably going to well, stand again. I thought it was an African disease, but clearly but even it's the not. French are... Uh, he's, he's, he's a man, by the way, that yes. while you might push him away, he's a man who started the commercialization of football, oh, football. back in 1998. And for me, that's the biggest credit. Right. But at some point, I think everyone overstays their welcome. <laughs> even, uh, even we here. If we went on until 11... Uh, we would, yeah. would have overstayed our welcome. Speaking of overstaying our welcome, let's head into the African proverb before we leave you to start your day. Of course, our African proverb, if you close your eyes to fact, you will learn through accident. Is that for Blatter? <laughs> <laughs> what is the fact in Blatter's? Maybe thing? even for Wenga. Mm. strike cover now. They are injured. It's, uh... The fact is, we need. <laughs> There's Nicholas Bender coming off the oh, bench. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it, this is one of those proverbs that uh, 
really uh, has a lot of meaning because right. uh, we we all tend i think in life we tend to live beyond our means mm. uh, most of the time and probably that is what led to the credit crunch back in 2008 mm. so yeah. when you close your eyes to the fact that you can't afford something or you can't do something then you're bound to land into some kind of uh, trouble mm. or accident or whatever it is so it's it's very right. close i really love it. like someone you you, to, you you talked about last week i really love this segment because there are so many things. Every time I, I sit on this set, mm. there's a proverb that I can relate with. Right. Yeah. Especially the one about beauty. <laughs> <laughs> well, but please I'm send us uh, any African proverb that you have, and we'll be able to look at it. But today's African proverb, if you close your eyes to fact, you will land in an accident. And, of course, that brings it to the end of today's show. Uh, we don't want to overstay. Some of you have uh, posted on our Facebook page and... Uh, at Mebkeb and at MB Gold, would love to forget this past football weekend, of course. Well, let's move on. Let's move on and uh, start the day. Isma, thank you so much for joining us. Yes. And Good the beautiful morning. Mabel. Pleasure being here. The rest of you, have a fantastic day. Coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Hotel. Good night. <laughs> good, good morning. Oh, good morning. Some people are just going to bed. Yeah. On YouTube. Oh, yeah. yeah on YouTube. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. TV, turning on your world. Yo! Aro, give me five stress. Three gonorrhea. Kale muli wano, you think you've brought kapasas? Omwana ye naso wolo gamba super deep. Si miyaka jafe. I'm like, I like my swag too. <laughs> So what about it? Then she was like, I also like your accent. That village accent. Now. I'm going to give video. I'm going to give you a 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 video. Rare Hufa. On the next episode of Men. A lot of research shows that money is a key issue where stability in marriages is concerned. How are the roles managed? How are they shared? We've over monetized relationships. Life in general. Mm -hmm. And it has become so much about who has more, who has less. A man being able to provide basics goes beyond just him feeling like a man. Because life is not about the basics. Life is about living. And living isn't just about the roof and the power and the water. It's, it's about, it's about the, the little things. Her Your money man is hers. Your, <laughs> Your money is ours. Now, if you want to give another bank account for you yourself, what kind of? Join us this Wednesday at 9.50 p.m. Only on men as we talk about marriages and money. Men.